Okay. Let me know if it's a lot. It sounds like the two chase. Sound like. Oh yeah yeah. for you. Miracle. When you pray, someone's always hearing you. Ancestors, Holy Spirit, maybe someone near to you. A miracle. Yeah, you are a miracle. Fresh, you are a miracle. Best, you are a miracle. Project right here. Big up to Dr. Dre. Big up to you, Dre. All day. Appreciate the time. You know, we were recording this project in a variety of studios, and this is sort of the icing on the cake. This is sort of like we we recorded in all these different places and we got all these different sounds, but I needed to come to a studio like this so that everything can now sound the same. Everything can now have the same power, inflection, this kind of thing, tone, and all, all of that. So this is the project. It's called Street Light. And it's called Street Light because, well, for a variety of reasons. One is that this is light for the street, and this is light of the street. This is light coming from the street. Meaning that light is a, a symbol for awareness. Light is a symbol for the mind being able to see clearly or, or finally see. That's what we call light. I finally seen the light, uh, or, or you know, light in darkness. So we call it street light because, because of the symbolism of light. But the other side to it is that the, the actual street light was the original source of hip hop's power. It is where we went to when we was outside DJing in the parks and in the street. We would go to a, a, a lamp post, a, a street light, go into the base of the light, and there you could rearrange the wiring at the base of the light and give yourself electricity. So many DJs actually did this, went to the base of, of the lamp post and extracted the energy from the lamp post. This is the original way we used to power our, our, our equipment uh, uh, and lights and all this other stuff. So. 
I went back to that traditionally and called this particular mixtape project Street Life. Take a ride, take a ride round the block now Everyday scene, dope fiends and the cops round At any traffic stop, we could be shot down And in the courts it's just us, justice is not found Roadblocks, checkpoints and the lockdown This is gonna be on the tour exclusively You can't really get it anywhere else Of course you can go to krs-one.com You can go right there and get everything really just relating to me but if you want a real CD copy of it, you're gonna have to come to the tour or you're gonna have to go to krs-1.com and order yourself a copy. So this is how it's going down. Street light, light for the streets. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. 
boy Don't you fall for it, don't fall for it Yo, me, I'm not a fake dude I'ma keep it real, real They see through it all at America Needs a heel deal America ain't really sick This is what it really is Gunshots and cages for black and brown little kids Now they acting like they not the cause of how we live Do not tell me what you gonna do do, I can see what you did Look at her, look at him, look at them, look at me Do you see our interests represented in society? No you don't, and you won't Cause democracy's a joke Every four years these same people asking us to vote Nothing changed but the Range Rover Switching lanes over I remain the flamethrower Knowledge reigns game over Don't fall for it, don't you fall for it Rodney King, George Floyd, man we all saw it So don't protest with the fines But don't move with self-reliance While the soul is being silenced For the religion of science Don't fall for it, don't you fall for it Don't fall for it, don't you fall for it If you thinking and you earning and you drinking and you burning and you really not concerning with the news and what they learning, don't fall for it. Don't you fall for it. Don't fall for it. Don't you fall for it. There's no justice in the courts. We are always taking shorts. They can shoot us like a sport. And it's not trust that they want. Don't fall for it. Don't you fall for it. Don't fall for it. Don't you fall for it. Take it up. for it. This is not the regular, this is that boom, blah, blah, blah. What's up, it's the Blastmaster KRS-One. Big up and welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. This is where we get down. The Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation ministry, archive, school, and society. I am here right now in Mableton, Georgia, and I'm doing two shows, Saturday, Sunday. Obviously it's Sunday while you're watching this, but this show went down on Saturday just last night. So this, what we're talking about, as you know, is we're talking about law and being down by law. And so we're doing our read, we're gonna get to that in a minute. But while I'm here, I thought I'd show y'all some, just something exclusive. Check this out. Because everybody's bad and everybody's tough. But how many people are intelligent enough to open up their eyes and see through the lies? Discipline themselves yourself to stay alive. Not many. That's why the universe sent me to them on this stage with this to say. The rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. In the final hour, many heads gonna lose power. What does the rich versus poor really mean? Psychologically, it means you gotta pick your team. When someone says the rich gets richer, visualize wealth and put yourself in the picture. The rich get richer, cause they work toward rich. The poor get poorer, cause they mind can't switch. From the ghetto, let go, it's not a novelty. You can love your neighborhood without loving poverty. Follow me, mother, father, son, daughter. There's no reason to fear the new world order. We must order the whole new world to pay us. The new world order and that old state chaos. The big brother watching over you, that was a lie, you see. Hip hop is starting its own secret society. But first, you and I got to unify, stop the negativity, and control our creativity. The rich is getting richer, so why we ain't richer? Could it be we still thinking like niggas? Educate yourself, make the world be bigger, visualize wealth, and put yourself in the picture. Okay, so 
that's what that was. So what we want to do now is return to our lesson. I just wanted to show y'all a little bit of the message that we're putting forward to people. We're not just performing. We're not just performing. We're also teaching people as we go. We have to inspire the people that are in the audience, not just rock them. It's called edutainment. Peace. Peace and welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. I am Minister Sun One, and here is our teacher, KRS One. Yes, indeed. Uh, what a wonderful night that was last night. Um, what, what a wonderful night. Uh, that was actually pretty dope. I, I'm still adjusting myself here because um, my stand uh, that I'm dealing with is not really where it should be. Um, let me just lift this up. Now, what, what, what a wonderful night last night. Um, that's not going up from here, is it? That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, Hold on one second. Let me get a book under there. Yeah, man. Uh, big up the slick Rick. Shout out to uh, to uh, Chub Rock. Who? Chub Rock. Of course, Chub. Big Daddy uh, King. Of course, Chub Rock. And uh, and 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 as we shouted on the on the stage, um, you know, get well, rock him. Um. He's, he's a little under the weather right there. We're trying to get ourselves together here real quick. I just got to put this, this real quick down here. No, that's that's the wrong book. Okay. Yeah, let me do. Well, let me tell a little story real quick. Yeah, you, you know what? Take me off the screen real, 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 real quick. Let me just get myself. So the most amazing thing uh, happened or to me personally last night as we were trying to get or, or once it was our time to go on stage i wanted to go hook everything up i realized after the or that the mixer was different somebody changed levels that i had set this and the third but also we were promised during the sound check that everything was going to remain the same needless to say no um, it very possibly was a totally different mixer. So we trying to get the sound together. But during this time also, the host had a little bit of time. And then the place that was sponsoring it, which was a car dealership, when that was sponsoring the concert, um, had a little presentation going on right before. So or you may not know this about me, but I used to sell cars <laughs> in Connecticut or whatever. Um, but, or right, I sold, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this quick. I sold cars at Honda, Liberty Honda in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, my car salesmanship got cut short because there was this manager who essentially thought I wasn't following the steps um, in order to uh, sell the car to a customer and totally was was bugging out, yelled at me in the office, door open, the whole entire, it was a special day or they had a special sale going on. There's mad people in the showroom. He cusses me out. Everybody hears it. Mind you, he was wrong. Uh, so essentially I, I let him know he was wrong. And of course he ended up finding out he was wrong later. Um, but needless to say, I quit right there. Last night, <laughs> as they're getting the sound together, they say all of a sudden they're, they're about to give an award. The guy who comes on stage is the dude that fired me. And liver, I swear to God to you <laughs> that this was this was incredible. I'm standing there looking at him, like, oh my God, it's you're there and I'm here. Um, and I wasn't supposed to be there, but you were always supposed to be doing that. It, it, it was it was a crazy um 
just a crazy moment in my life. That, or, or how is this possible? His whole life changed, move him down to Atlanta um, to apparently be a manager in Atlanta for this dealership. And at the same time, I'm down in Atlanta making it do what it do, um, living the best life. <laughs> the greatest hip hop life anyone could ever wish. Uh, but that being the case, I just wanted to share that quick story real quick. Um, Cause it was amazing to me. I, I, I damn near wanted to say, Hey, <laughs> like remember me? Uh, Cause he doesn't remember me. I didn't have these. Uh, so I know I totally look different. He probably didn't think anything about it, but it was insane. Um, so wow. That, yeah, that was that was last night. That was crazy, and what a turn of events! Yeah, because <clears throat> there we are headlining, right? And uh, the cornerstone that was thrown away turned out to be the capstone. <laughs> uh, and literally, you was on a riser, right? Right? <laughs> right? No, no, that's what I'm saying. I was taking in the entire environment of what it really was. Wow. And, he was oblivious. Right, exactly. Wow, that's how it usually works too, you know. Uh, it comes full circle like that. That's an amazing story. Yes, um, and So we got a lot to go over today. Yeah. Um, we might as well get right to it. Uh, Let me make one more quick announcement and, and you can go off of this. Yep. That uh, everybody on the call should send an email to the hip hop census at gmail.com. Uh, we're giving everybody the opportunity in the temple of hip hop to be the first to sign uh, the census. So we're gonna send it to you all first. So essentially just email your name and your email address to the hip hop census at gmail.com. And that is my piece. Well, you know, that's an excellent place to come from <clears throat> the hip hop census at gmail.com because the hip hop census uh, is an excellent place for us to start. We're talking about law and it's, uh, we're, well, before we, we were talking about law and it's um, what it is, uh, the importance of law, the importance of principle, uh, the, the importance of uh, order, and, and condition and what law actually is. Not these fake ordinances and rules that that people want to uh, lay down uh, uh, on us for the control of, of, of whole populations, but real law, which is basically a condition, the condition uh, of your life. We talked about that uh, at the front of this. And we, we're taking our down by law lesson in section so that we can understand it. This is how the gospel of hip hop was written uh, uh, to be broken down like that, at least this part of it um, to be broken down like that. I always point out the sections of knowledge within uh, what it is we're actually doing. So, so <clears throat> you have, um, you have um, the first part, which is law, what it is. And actually the very first part of Down by Law, we talked about those who were actually in prison and how uh, to think while you're in that confined situation. That then went into uh, law as what it is. Now we stopped here last time because this part here is very important to the building of our community. We're now gonna discuss law as it pertains to the building of community. We're gonna come off the police real quick. We're gonna start with the police because we was talking about that last week as well and so on. We're gonna, and, and our read is up to that point as well. But as we read, you will see that the gist of this read is not so much a critique of the police. We already know what that is, but how do we build crimeless society? That's the issue. How do we build societies that we're all getting along in? Not these societies where we're constantly in competition and fighting and killing and robbing and stealing. The hip hop society must aspire to 
live in environments beyond those conditions, beyond those conditions. That's what we're studying today. That's what this is all about. If I haven't said it, let me say it now. The Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation ministry, archive, school, and society. We believe that rap is something we do while hip hop is something we live. We believe that we are hip hop, that hip hop is not an object, hip hop is a subject. And so the way in which you preserve hip hop is not just by preserving its objects, but by, but by preserving the subject of hip hop itself, which is you. Hip hop is the name of our activity in the world. It's the name of our culture. It's the name of our collective consciousness, hip hop. This is the name of who we are in world history. When you come to that realization, you also come to the realization that you're not living hip hop just for you. Hip hop was before you, for, for most of us, we came into hip hop, we didn't invent hip hop, we came into it. For others of us like myself, the culture of hip hop, we are the architects of it. It did not exist before us. So you have to ask yourself, if you're serious about your role in hip hop, <clears throat> you have to ask yourself, if I'm entering something that I did not create, it was already here, but I'm partaking in it because I feel I am this, then is it not wise to learn from the original sources of the culture that you're now going to adopt? Isn't it not wise to enter into a community of people who care about the culture that you are about to adopt? Those that care about hip hop have no problem with its principles, no problem. Those who care about any society or any community have no problem with that society's principles. That's the issue with that society's principles. You have no problem with it because you're part of the society. In fact, the society's principles are you. It's like almost part of your attitude. And this is where law and ordinances and all of this type of stuff, this is where it really comes from. It comes from the cultural practices of a group. And, and that's also why <clears throat> us African-Americans can't seem to get justice in, in white America. It's not just that white America may be unjust. It is more the fact that this is a cultural thing too. You know, white American law works for white American culture, but it doesn't really work for Native American culture or black culture or any other culture as well. And that's, that's where the law should be more inclusive. It should be more democratic. It should be more inclusive of, of all the people of the nation. But we got this cultural issue that, that we don't want to deal with. Nobody wants to deal with, with expanding even white culture to include everybody else. Uh, I'm talking about ex, in, um, expanding American culture to include everyone that lives in the United States. This thing is difficult because it's culture that is, that is at the basis of law, really. So when a culture lays down the laws, it helps it to survive. Everybody else joining in on that culture, they, their laws may not help you to survive. These laws are for it to survive. Like we talked about last week, the uh, most law is about the well-being of the state. Not even about, they, they say the people, but what are the people? The people of the state. And it's not even supposed to be like that, really, but this is how it's being practiced, I should say. So we're going to continue our read now. Um, hold on, let me get my glasses here together. We're going to continue our read with Down by Law, starting on page 572. Starting on page 572. And what we're talking about here, uh, with, with continuing what, what Plato is calling the social contract theory. Uh, and, and like I said, we're, we're discussing law uh, as it pertains to the building of society, the building of community. How do we, hip hop, build a crimeless society? So last week, we, uh, we uh, put our pause on uh, paragraph 69 
I always read the paragraph before that and then go into our read. So I'm on page 571 and we highlight this paragraph. Paragraph 68 is highlight. Here's the paragraph. We hip hoppers are a kind of craftsmen or craftspeople. Hip hop is our craft and hip hop, even when it is most critical of the United States, it is still an asset to the United States, an important part of its total functioning. The ignoring of hip hop is not so much the ignoring of a needed craft in American society. It is more the ignoring of a whole group of crafts, people in that society. Highlight that. That is very important to the governance of society. We could clearly see, we, we could clearly see that that the that the the governance of the American society is not just um uh it, it's it's not just and I and, and I'm not saying this not just like I'm criticizing the society. We're past that already. If, if you haven't gotten your criticism in, this is not the time for that. You should have been criticizing you months ago, okay? We're past criticism and judgment and finger pointing and name call. We're past that. What we're looking at again, like I said, how do we create a crimeless society? Now take a look at this piece right here. The ignoring of hip hop is not so much the ignoring of a needed craft in American society. Hip hop is a needed craft. If, 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 like, imagine breaking up, seeing graffiti on DJ and beatboxing, just those are needed crafts in the American society. People all over the world are using our crafts to advance themselves, get money, fame, and glory using our crafts and the United States government is ignoring us. We right here in their face every day, global influence, and we're still being ignored. That's unjust. That's unjust. It's not justice. It's not, and not justice like criminal, justice like not balanced. You don't have the order in your society that you need to have to conduct a proper society. Why? Because you're ignoring major parts of your own society. You're ignoring it. Why? Racism. Why? Sexism. You know, there's women that could do amazing things, but are shut out just because they're women. Oh, no women priests around here. Uh, no, no women this and no women that. And you're losing. Remember, Adolf Hitler in Nazi Germany, when he was rising, he threw all the prominent Jews out of, out of Germany. He said, you guys can leave, okay? Get out of here. We don't need you. It's going to be a white German Christian, whatever he had on his mind. Do you know he threw Einstein out the country? <laughs> like, you know, Adolf Hitler, and not through Einstein. You know, Einstein left, and so did others, like Oppen. Oppenheimer, the one who actually built the atomic bomb or was the head of it. These people, these are major and other scientists. You know, I'm just quoting, I'm saying Einstein because it's a name we all know. But hundreds of brilliant minds got thrown out of Germany due to some sort of bigotry, racism, some view that, that these people had against these other people. But look how it destroyed your society. These, these views are not, discriminatory views in a society is not just criminal. It's not just immoral. It defunctions the society. That, that's what we're talking about here. It, it, make, it, it, um, it breaks the society. The society cannot function accurately when everybody don't get the equality of the society. You know, equality is not just about, you know, we equal, as, as, as we will learn later on. It's not about we equal. Equality is about you being where you're supposed to be, I'm where I'm supposed to be, and they where they supposed to be. And we all functioning for the good of the all. But for, the, the, but for us to do that, and for all of us to work toward the good of the all, 
we all have to be in our proper places in the society. If I study for 10 years to become a doctor, I become the doctor, then can't get a job as a doctor because I'm Latino? Because I'm, why? I can't get a job as a doctor because I don't fit whatever the society says a doctor is supposed to be. Now, I just spent money, time, effort. I'm a brilliant doctor. I know how to get down, but because I'm black or whatever, I can't get this job. That's not only criminal and immoral, both. It's immoral first and unethical. Then it's criminal. But it also breaks the society. It makes the society dysfunctional. You're not using the best parts of your own house for your own benefit. Now, how stupid can that actually be? This is the governance we're dealing with today. That's This is the governance we're actually dealing with today. When you see whole swaths of people, talented people, talented people, brilliant craftspeople in the American society being ignored for one reason or another. That's poor governance. That's why we highlight that. And that's why I'm making an emphasis to make that point clear. Because our society will not be like that. Our society will have everybody in their rightful place. 69. Such ignore and Notice the spelling. It's ignore with a dash and an ants on it. Because you're ignoring whole swaths of your own society. Such ignore ants assist in America's economic woes. It says that our particular hip hop arts and crafts are not valuable to the society in which our arts and crafts originate. And because of this lie, injustice is allowed to flourish in the fertile soil, soul, of American society. But a society's ignore ants of its craftspeople is equally its downfall. Let me read that one more time. But a society's ignore ants of its craftspeople is equally its downfall. As Mr. Winspear continues, we're reading a book, this is a being quoted from uh, um, another, um, further on, we was reading an author. Um, you can go back and, and try to get his first name. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go back, but uh, I'm now just using his, his, his last name, Winspear. As Mr. Winspear continues in uh, the Genius of Plato's Thought. This is a book. The Genius of Plato's Thought. Quote, Plato shows very great insight when he maintains that the state is based on an increasing interdependence of craftsmen and crafts. An interdependency of craftsmen and crafts. I depend on you, you depend on me. You build the house, I cook the food. He goes, hunts the animal. This one built the stove and makes the fire. We're all craftspeople working together toward the good, of, toward our whole good. That's society. And this is how society is created. And in this instance, we would say it's breaking. I'm seeing graffiti art, DJ and beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and street entrepreneurs that must work together to build our society. You break while I rap, while he plays the music, while she puts the piece on the wall, while this one does a beatbox over the music played. I wear the fashion made by dude down the block. We speak the language of our schools and, you know, and on, and, and the knowledge that comes there and our own entrepreneur. Yeah. We're trading skills. The teacher of street knowledge will come to a rap concert and spend his money or her money at the rap concert. The one who makes clothes, not only clothes 
the DJ, but the DJ has spent his money with the cloak, with the street fashion person who spends her money with the street knowledge person who spends her money with the street entrepreneur who spends his money on graffiti art pieces. This is how community is built. We are sharing and we are making a vow to buy and sell and trade only amongst ourselves. We're going to buy, trade only amongst ourselves. This is how you also stay rich forever. Because no money is leaving your community. In fact, money is coming into your community and it's staying there. How is it coming in? Because if we can, if we can manage to be a culture, not just say culture out your mouth, but actually commit to one. If we can commit to hip hop as culture, then we say we're going to take 5% of our, our salaries and we're gonna to put toward this thing called hip hop, which makes me a true citizen of the culture because I'm paying for it. I'm a true citizen. Now, of course that's called taxes, but put the word taxes aside because that has all types of other um, Roman uh, connotations to it. Go back further than that. Let's, let's go to the Bible where Moses is trying to get free from the Pharaoh, uh, and what must they, what must the Jews do first? What, what must these Hebrews do? You know, what must this group, I should say, let me not put a name on any of them. Let me just say first, what must this group who wants to get free from whatever oppression they are perceiving, how do they get free? First thing they did was they put their jewelry together. One came with a gold plate. Another one had gold earrings. This one had the silver cup. That one came with the silver sword. The, the, they took it all, put it all, melted it down and made something else. That was able to be traded to these other nations. But when the money came in from these other nations, they kept it to themselves. They only bought bread from their own people. They only bought clothes from their own people. They only learned and supported their own teachers and their own schools, the money stayed inside. This is not about excluding anybody. This is not about, um, uh, it's not about any of that. Uh, you know, a white only society or a Jewish only, Islamic only, you know, no, this is what is necessary to build community at some point in your, especially at the beginning of your community. You're going to have to separate yourself from everybody else and declare your independence. Am I saying independence on the 4th of July or the 4th of July? Big up to Frederick Douglass. But this is where your independence comes from. It comes from a group of people deciding we are the culture ourselves. Now, everybody else can talk it, but we are going to be this culture. How are we going to be this culture? Well, you're going to take your earrings out. Them gold earrings are going in the pot. Um, those gold rings are going in the pot. Whatever assets, a donkey, a car, a house, or whatever you got, put it in the pot. The, and, and the bigger your contribution, the higher your standing in the society. This is why the rich are treated in the way that they are. These are cultural principles. We're looking at it only, let's say, from a labor point of view, you know, unions and all of that. And we're saying, no, these rich folk are ripping us off. If we don't stop them, it's going to be about slavery in a minute, uh, this, that, and the other. And that's true in its, in its sense. But we're past that. We're going deeper than that. And we're saying, what is it that causes societies to operate like this? Well, it starts with how the society is created from the beginning. If we're trying to start a society and somebody is putting an earring in and somebody else is, is uh, putting a house in, obviously the person putting down the house is going to have a bigger 
it, this is not even judgment. This is not, we could all say philosophically, we're still all equal. And we may all say that. Yes, in principle, we are all still equal here. Uh, the house or the earring, the, the, the need, the, the want to be part of this only requires that you give whatever you have. So if you have only an earring to give or a ring or whatever, give it because that's where we're equal. And you gave a house, you gave a car, you gave an earring. You didn't have nothing to give. This one gave his time, gave his name lent a service that we did not have, but he had, so he lent the service. All of that is what builds civilization, builds culture, builds society. Not just talking about it, but actually committing, committing to some sort of group action, some sort of collective action. And so this is also why once I put my earrings in, once I put my ring in and we got this big swelling pot of gold uh, and we're going to make chips out of it and, and, you know, figure ourselves out. Once we got that, now you claim you running off with the money? Yeah. First of all, the person we're giving this to is the most trustworthy person in our community. And this is where it starts. This is where the banking system starts, with trust, with faith. This is where it starts. If we don't have this, we don't have no banking. We don't have a financial system if we can't trust one another. And it has to be an institution or a figure or something. Because an institution is not a building. An institution is a group of people. So that's why I say either an institution, meaning a group of people, or an individual person. The community got to respect somebody, got to trust somebody. And on that trust, on that faith, we put our gold in, we put our silver in, trusting that this person's not gonna run off with the community's value. Now, and imagine how many other communities felt like this. They knew this, they did it, and the leader of their community jerked them. Wow, wow. And it happens all the time throughout human history, throughout world history, happens all the time. Leaders can't be trusted. People you give the money to can't be trusted. You know, or they was trustworthy at the beginning, not trustworthy at the end. They got co-opted down the line, uh, kind of thing. This is what destroys cultures. No loyalty, no unity, no trust, no faith, no obedience to law. This is what destroys communities. And the and and Obedience to your own laws, not somebody else's law. The laws of your community, obedience to the laws and principles of your own community is what lifts it up. It is what makes it a community. You are following the ordinances of your community. You are ritualistically following the traditions of your community through law. There's the strength, y'all. That's the strength. That's the strength. And so let me finish reading that because I didn't even get through Plato yet because that's why we're going slow so that we really understand this. This is not entertainment, y'all. I know I might be entertaining right now. <laughs> but no, last night was entertainment. Uh, after I read this, I got my second show. I'm going to go and do that again. That's entertainment. Like I said, also, even that. It's not, it's, that's not, we're not just there to shake our ass, okay? Or, or say some dope rhymes. We're there to inspire people. We're there to let people know that they're special. Not, not on some, you're special. No, you really are. The retina in your eye belongs to you. The fingerprint in, in, in your finger belongs only to you. You like a snowflake. The snowflakes that fall, imagine all the billions of snowflakes that fall, every one of them are, 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 are unique. Every one of them. Imagine how magnificent nature is. How can every snowflake, billions falling constantly for hours, okay? None of them are the same. None of them are the same. Every snowflake is different. How is that possible? Well, it's possible when you raise your consciousness to that level of intelligence. 
that things like that are possible, that are possible. And you being a special individual in the world is the truth. It is the truth. There is nothing like you in the world. Nothing, nothing. You need to wake up if you haven't already and love yourself more, believe in yourself more, trust yourself more. This is not narcissism. That's what people like to call it. The minute you start acting confident about, oh, he's narcissistic. Get rid of that childishness. Believe in yourself. Lift your head up high. And I don't know ego on a real level of I know who I am. And I don't need to put my head down for nobody. I know who I am. This is how you have to talk. It's people like this, people that believe in themselves that create society. I believe in myself. And I'm not saying this of me, I'm saying of rhetorically, you know, a person says, I believe in myself. What do you believe? I believe in myself. The two of us go to third person. What do you believe? I believe in myself. And what do we believe in? I believe I'm hip hop. What do you believe? I believe I'm hip hop. What do you believe? I believe I'm hip hop. Do you really believe you hip hop? Yeah, watch this. Do you really believe you hip hop? Yeah, I can't show you none of the nine elements, but let me show you my obedience to your cultural laws. I am hip hop now. I am hip hop. Now, if I want to perform hip hop, now I go to the elements. If I want to wear some version of hip hop, I go to the elements. If I want to talk and learn of the culture and all of that, I go to the elements. But to actually be something, you have to unite with it. Be loyal to it, to it, not to yourself, to it, to yourself as it. This is also why black folk, I'll say it right now, while we in trouble, while we're not moving at the pace we should be moving. Why? Because we ain't black. We're not black. We talk black. But when it comes down to forming a black nation, Garvey. Oh, nah, nope, sorry. The most brilliant of African-American thinkers believe that we should be integrated with white society only. Nobody's talking about integrating with Native Americans. Nobody's talking about integrating with Mexicans. Nobody's talking about integrating with anybody other than this white society. This is African-American, and I'm, and I'm just being upfront with it. Okay, some on the call may not agree, but I'm I'm speaking facts. Okay, NAACP, all of that. Respect to them, no doubt. NAACP did they work uh, and still doing work to this day. Not dissing the organization, but the truth has to be spoken. The truth has to be spoken. Marcus Garvey was right, not W. E. B. Du Bois. We can see now that W.E.B. Du Bois was wrong in his philosophy. That talented 10th philosophy did not work for the black community, for the black society, for the black nation. It was about integration. Now, we're not put pointing no fingers. Again, let me keep saying that, okay? We're learning and we're learning the truth. Now we can't, in, in this day and age, 2022, look back on, you know, Garvey's time in the 30s, 40s, Garvey's time uh, and W.E.B. Du Bois's time and uh, act like we don't see the lessons. They had their argument, Booker T. Washington, um, the, the Booker T, do for yourself, pull yourself up from the bootstraps. Booker T, Garvey, Black nationalism, sovereignty. These dudes, even Martin R. Delaney before um, Garvey, okay? This line of Black thought is always being pushed aside. And we're now seeing that this line of Black thought is the only form of Black thought we have not dealt with yet. We haven't discussed an African-American nation. 
we're discussing African Americans. Right. I should say we're not discussing a black African nation. We're discussing African American inclusion in white American society. That's that's what we're discussing. And I say that respectfully. Let me just give you this other piece before we keep reading going on. I respect that. And I do. I don't agree. <laughs> not at all. My intelligence does not agree with that. We should be integrating into white society. I never agreed with that. I'm always with the Garvey side. We should build our own nation. But I do understand, though, uh, my intelligence is broad enough to include and understand the argument of NAACP, W.E.B. Du Bois, even Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, Thurgood Marshall, uh, and others uh, that pushed integration and actually integrated themselves. Uh, I do understand that argument. What is it to understand? Well, the first thing, if you want to come from a Garvey point of view, you would start with the fact that Africans, the, the concept of a Black African was already in America from day one, 10, 20,000 years ago. We start usually in paleoanthropology with the Bering Strait 12,500 years ago, the first so-called Native Americans as opposed to cross the Bering Strait up in the north from Russia, coming across Alaska, down into the Americas and populated from the north. That's now been disproven uh, and not or semi-disproven because there's evidence that some group came across uh, and populated uh, North America going down to South America. But now there's new evidence um, in South America with what is called the Sierra de Capavera. And I might be saying this wrong, Sierra de Capavera. Um, I'm just going from memory out, out of a book that I'm looking at in my memory. 45,000 years ago, uh, there are cave paintings in South America, down uh, in South America, parts of Colombia and so on. There's cave paintings down there that show, uh, that are carbon dated shows humans hunting animals, carbon dated 45,000 years. And the humans in the pictures are painted brown. Uh, the pictures are colorful. They show the color of the animals that are being hunted. They show the color of the people hunting them, uh, so on. And these are brown people. These are orange animals and black and with stripes and they got polka dots in them. And these things were preserved for 45,000 years. So this black people in America, 40, 50,000 years ago, we already here, y'all. Already, or our heritage is already here. The black African heritage is already in America, already. Now, if you start from Garvey, you, or start from that angle, you'll say, no, we was already here. We're not getting kicked out of here. We ain't going nowhere else. You are the invader. You, England, France, um, Spain, you are the colonists. You don't belong here. We belong here, okay? You don't belong here. Your land is Europe. You're supposed to be in Europe. You're European. We are African. We were even in Europe before you. Now, because you supposedly, uh, um, you know, the so-called white race is supposedly uh, to have started in Europe, arguments about albino Africans being thrown out of Africa and having to migrate to Europe, all of these theories, and that's what they are, this concept of a white race, uh, and the concept of race period, we're all supposed to be designated certain areas, black folk, Africa, Asian folk, Asia, white folk, European. This is stupid too, on a, on, on a whole nother level. Hold on one minute. Okay, yeah, this is this is stupid too on another level, but I have to put it this way because this is what the, this is what people are discussing. This And this is how it's actually discussed. And it's silly. I mean, I gotta get the silliness out my mouth first to even explain what I'm talking about. I'm trying to discuss the other side that I do understand that we were here, Africans are here in the United States, really the globe, and Europeans are supposedly 
exclusive to Europe and even some parts of Northern Africa. You're not exclusive to America though. So when we start really talking about America, you got to talk about the black African first, then you talk about Native Americans. Even we black Africans give the respect to the Native Americans saying you are the indigenous people of this land. We give that up. But that's not scientifically or anthropologically accurate either. Um, the way we are learning about nations and so on is wrong. It's all militaristic. It's not the truth. It's not based on even, you know, genetics and biology. It's not based on uh, um, climatology. It's not based on paleoanthropology. It's not based on linguistics. It's not, these are all the newer sciences that are coming out that's revealing a different past than the past that we've been uh, uh, taught to uh, comprehend. So I want to just put a period on this. I do understand W.E.B. Du Bois' position. There's a United States Constitution. Now, of course, when it was written, we were... <laughs> that we were not even thought of in that country. Well, we was. We just thought of as three-fifths of a human in that document. But technically, the spirit of the document is supposed to be all men are created equal, yah, 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 and so on. And, and so that, that's supposed to be the spirit of the document. So people like Dr. King, um, W.E.B. Du Bois, Frederick Douglass, and others, they tend to hold America to its own principles. And say, didn't you say this? Now, if these are your principles, why are you acting stupid? That's basically what all of them are saying. Why are you contradicting your own principle? This American experiment could be a great thing if you just follow your own laws. So in a way, W.E.B. Du Bois and, and uh, Frederick Douglass and people like Dr. King, they are the true American. Because they're trying to hold the Constitution to its sacredness. And the United States government is not, is not. And they're not holding the Constitution to its sacredness. The United States government, from the time the Constitution was written, even while it was written, was all about politics and what I get and what you get and what you don't get. And so this is this is the argument, you know, constant this the U United States Constitution was created in argument. It wasn't created in no peace. Nobody agreed. Everybody could just basically um how they say um you know uh compromise. Everybody compromised. Nobody got what they wanted. So that means from the time the constitution was put forward, there was those that are gonna break those laws, not not adhere to the parts that they knew they had to compromise for. You're not gonna, you're not gonna compromise. That's why there was a civil, a civil war. Because even though there's a constitution, you got all these Southern states that said, no, nah, we never really was down with it. We compromised, but we really want these black folk oppressed and these Native Americans, we want them annihilated. And we want this land for ourselves. That was the creed and it was biblical. And it was providence was claimed and divinity was claimed on this one. And remember the South almost won. They almost won. That's how strong that thought actually was, which was against the United States constitution or at least the premise of it. Because the South would argue that no, they're, they're, they're standing for the original constitution. You black folk are three fifths of human. That's what it says in the document, right? Right. Okay, let's go fight. Let's go deal with that. Why are you trying to make these black folk more than what this law says they are? The law, Supreme Court said, white people uh, that said that black people have no, no law or anything that white people have to respect. Nothing. That's law. That was law. Law. Okay. This is the United States. So people come, uh, Frederick Douglass and W.E.B. Du Bois later, later on, W.E.B. Du Bois come and he says, America, you got the you got you got a really good thing going here. Let's not fuck it up. 
Why don't you follow your own laws so we all can live and be a beacon of light in the world? Oh, more than half of the white society agree. <laughs> 80% of white people was like, yup, this is where we gotta go. We gotta follow our own laws. And 80% of white folk, I, I estimate 80%, 75% of white folk really said, yes, we got to follow these laws. Oh, we're not a country. We're a country of laws. If we're not following our own laws, we're not a country. White folk was like, word. These are black folk telling white folk this stuff because white folk weren't following their laws. Black folk are the champions of the Constitution. You go back, look at the history. Black folk are the ones yelling, always oh, bringing the Constitution back up, always oh, bringing the Constitution back up. White folk are not. You don't see too many outspoken white folk talking all the time about the Constitution. You see, you see, um, you, you see white lawyers and and constitutionalists, those who study the Constitution. You see them talking about the Constitution, but you don't see white you, uh, labor people or. Uh, you know, these other organizations, oh, you may see the NRA talk about just the Second Amendment. <laughs> you know, like, they'll pick their little piece. But to discuss the spirit of the Constitution itself, all men are created equal, endowed by their creator, with liberty, life, the pursuit of liberty, life, justice, all this stuff, uh, domestic tranquility, uh, 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 all of this stuff that's in the Constitution, the spirit of it, why it exists. Only black folk are the ones yelling at. And that's sad for America, sad for white America too. Actually it's sad for all of America, really, really. Because why Native Americans ain't yelling for the constitution? <laughs> that's stupid for me to even say. <laughs> that, that's ridiculous. But, but again, Native American, if you're gonna say you Native American, you know, then you got to stand by that constitution too. And there are Native Americans who stand by the constitution. There's Native Americans in the United States government. Let's keep that real. Uh, that do stand by it. But, you know, where's their outs? Where is their W.E.B. Du Bois? Where is their Frederick Douglass? Where is their Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who's constantly putting the constitution in the face of the authors of it? So I understand the other side of the argument. That's why I'm spending time on this for you to understand. It's not one argument. Garvey ain't all right. Neither is Booker T. I just happen to be a Garveyite. <laughs> okay, that's that. But if you don't understand, see, understanding is not about book reading or or smartness. That's that's not what intelligence is. Intelligence is about what you understand, your capacity to know. The mind can know anything. It can know anything. So if you say, I don't know something, you're, you're making yourself not know it. Because you can know anything. You can know anything. I used to do, I used to tease my kids uh, when, they, when they were younger, like, you know, eight, nine. Uh, I said, I know everything. And they was like, how did you know everything? I said, I know everything. There's nothing that you can say that I don't know. And of course, at eight, their little brain, anything they came with, of course I had an answer for it. But as they got older, I revealed to them, because they got in their teenage years, like, come on, dad, are you always saying you know everything? And then I revealed the secret. Because I have access to everything. I don't have to know it myself. As long as I got my phone, I got some books, I got a, a DVD, I got some, I could go look this up. I have access to knowledge. So technically, I know everything. If I, I might not know it right now when you ask me, but I can know it. I can know everything. So the mind has a capacity. This is the brilliance of the mind. Awareness and intelligence and understanding. These are the things that excite the mind. You can have your point of view. And be clear with your point of view and why. But if you don't understand the other person's point of view, your point of view is limited. Your, your point of view is, is fragmented. It's only your point of view. You only want to hear what you want to hear. 
And that's not intelligence. That That's something else. Emotion, maybe. But intelligence is, I don't agree with Adolf Hitler. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, and not on, on the sake of the Jews and all of that, for the sake of what he did to black people. Okay, Nazi Germany, I ain't feeling that at all. Okay, for what they did in Africa. Okay, remember that it was World War. Okay, too. Okay, they was in Africa from World War One and Two, annihilating our people. Nobody ever talks about that Holocaust. Nobody ever talks about the first Holocaust with the Germans in Africa, with the Gambian people. Nobody want to talk about that one. It's just when you say Holocaust and Hitler, all you think is Jews. You don't think of the Polish. You don't think of gypsies, which is a sect of people. You don't think about the Germans that fought against Nazism, saying this is some bullshit. What y'all on? They got killed too, sent to the Czech concentration camps. We don't talk about the native, um, the African Americans who were in Germany, jazz singers, military people who was caught by the Nazis thrown in the concentration camp, or if you were military, executed right there on the spot. African-Americans. Not to mention French Africans. Not to mention Africans from Africa. To discuss Hitler, I don't have to discuss Jews at all. At all. That was horrible unto itself. But nobody's discussing my pain. And, and with how the Holocaust affects us as well. So again, I have nothing. Hitler is an idiot as far as I'm concerned, okay? But if I don't understand Mein Kampf, which was the book he wrote, My Struggle, uh, Mein Kampf, and I may be saying that wrong too, but Hitler's book, My Struggle, as a philosopher, if you don't have that, and read, read how he talks about Negroes in the book. Read about how he talks about Jews and Negroes in the book. Look at how he talks about the German race. If you don't understand, if you have not read this for yourself, then how, how are you really discussing Hitler? You didn't read his words. What are you getting, a, D, a, a PBS special? They tell you he's an evil, horrible, evil man. And you're just like, right, he's an our horrible, evil man, right. But nobody read that part where Adolf Hitler says, everything I'm doing, everything, he, 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 and I'm paraphrasing, he says, my whole inspiration is America. <laughs> you didn't hear what I just said, okay? Adolf Hitler said in several ways and in several occasions, he said the way America dealt with the Native Americans is how I'm gonna deal with the Jews here. The same concepts, John F. Kennedy, President John F. Kennedy admired Hitler wrote it in his diary. Ford, um, Henry Ford and Hitler were pen pals. They wrote to each other. Don't get your information from no TV. That's, that's not information, that's assimilation. No, if you really wanna know something, try to get the balance of it. Try to get the justice of it. I'm gonna learn from the Klan right now. I need to know, why are you thinking the way in which you're thinking? Let me hear your full ideology right now. And let me try to understand where you're coming from. No, no ego, no emotion, no bias, none of that. Let me try to understand where you coming from. That's intelligence. That's intelligence, not judgment. You can judge later. Once you understand, you can judge later. But if you don't understand, you can't judge. You can't judge if you don't understand. So at the end of the day, I'm, I'm again, I'm spending time on this because we're, what are we discussing? Law? What are we discussing? Building a crimeless society? What are we discussing? How hip hop is going to build a crimeless society? What are we discussing? We're discussing integration versus um, 
separation, or should I say sovereignty versus citizenship? You know, now I can't even say that because you're citizen and sovereign. Sovereignty versus integration. And in, in, at this uh, in, at this particular juncture, sovereignty versus versus uh, integration. And I wanted to make that clear and make intelligence clear as well. Don't be afraid to study things that may offend you. Don't be afraid to listen to the other person's view that may offend you. May offend you. They may be talking about how we're going to kill all these black people tonight at six o'clock. The scholar is there at three o'clock trying to understand. <laughs> like, what, what did you say? <laughs> Let me try to get this. I only got about three hours. Let me try to understand in an hour what you really say. So I really can react. But don't get your information from television or from emotionally charged news shows that's really playing on your emotions. And they're not giving a balanced view. They're not making you understand both sides of the story. They're just giving you what their side of the story. And, and it's usually some political party, some pop political something. No truth, no knowledge, no intelligence. Just, I want my way, and I'm willing to fight, scheme, lie, manipulate for it. That's what we're experiencing, even as knowledge. Keep your eye open. So let me get back to Plato real quick. I want to restart again with this. As Mr. Winsper continues in the genius of, or the genesis, sorry, the genesis of Plato's thought, the genesis of Plato's thought. This is a book that we're quoting. Quote, Plato shows very great insight when he maintains that the state is based on an increasing interdependence of craftsmen and crafts. Plato, however, very cleverly interprets this mutual dependence of increasing specialization. Specialization is your craft. Breaking is a specialization. You know, we're all hip hop. <clears throat> But breaking is your specialization. Or for me, MCing is my specialization. However, very uh, Plato, however, very cleverly interprets this mutual dependence of increasing specialization as a natural inequality. So the fact that we are, I'm breaking, uh, I'm MCing, you're breaking, this one's graffiti art. That's naturally unequal. We're all in. We're not unique. Uh, 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 we're not uh, equal in that sense. We're actually all unique. We're actually unique. And Plato is looking at this in the form of the society. How society is naturally unequal because of our crafts, because of our interests. So how do you bring the equality? Plato, however, very cleverly interprets this mutual dependence of increasing specialization as a natural inequality. Plato, like so many modern thinkers, thinkers since the Renaissance, endeavored to base his theory of the state on a theory of human nature, okay? Plato is basing his theory of the state on the theory of human nature. The theory of people coming together, humans coming together, he's not basing it on the God. He's not basing it on um, existing laws, laws that we knew already worked. He's saying, no, the basis of society, as far as even you can say Greeks are concerned, because Plato's Greek in that sense, the, the basis of his Greek society is this ain't based on law. This ain't based on gods and goddesses. This is not based on any of that. It's not even based on art, which is other societies. This is gonna be based on human nature. This is gonna be based on human nature. Who you are, what you can do, the essence of you. A man may not be judged by the color of his skin, but by the what? Content of his character. Plato is coming here with human nature as the basis for society. And we must remember that he's Greek and so he's talking about Greek society. But we're learning, though, about the formation of society, at least this society here, 
We can learn from this, though. Uh, Plato, like so many modern thinkers since the Renaissance, endeavored to base his theory of the state on a theory of human nature. We are by nature interdependent. Each one of us is fitted by nature to do one particular task. This is the central fact in the secret of the origin of society and the justification of justice, end quote. Now look at this. It's human nature that our society is based upon, American society, all Western society, so to speak, is based on this concept right here, human nature, who you really are. And this is why uh, Western society has triumphed in the way that it has. Uh, it really triumphed through militarism and killing people. And I mean that. That's, that's really how Western society is maintaining itself now and, and put itself in control then. It's killing, murder, deceit, robbery, lying. That's really what it is. But if you can get past that for a minute, <clears throat> Plato, in this, in this regard, is saying that, but if you want to create a state, you're going to have to think about people stealing, robbing, killing, murdering. This is what people do. This is what people do. And not only that, these people are craftspeople, too. These people are craftspeople. We're all, in, we're, we're all not equal. We're all um, uh, trying to do our own thing. Each one of us is fitted to do something right. We're all fitted to do one thing right now. Uh, uh, and, and we got to get to it. So it says, so it says, we are by nature interdependent, yet we're not equal. We're all depending on each other. We're interdependent. Whose shoulder do you lean on? New song me and Simone just did with beat minus. Forget that. Anyway, but whose shoulder do you lean on? We're all interdependent. Yet we're all unequal. This is the conflict right here. This is the conflict. We all need each other, but nobody's alike. <laughs> It'd be easy if we all needed each other, we were all alike. Then society would be greed. And keep in mind, this is what society originally was before colonialism. We all were interdependent upon each other and we were all alike. So we didn't have to go through Plato and Socrates and everybody what they dealing with. We don't have to deal with that. We before that, before the colonialism, before the imperialism, before the invasion and the slavery and the robbery, before all of that, there were societies that were interdependent on themselves. Everybody was different. I'm sorry, everybody was the same, sorry. Everybody was the same. So, so, and what I'm thinking about is I'm um, Jesus of Nazareth, Yahshua of Nazareth, Nazarene, the Nazarene. Uh, I'm thinking about Yahshua, uh, uh, Jesus, where uh, he says, do unto others as they would have done unto you. And we, we, we debated that years ago at the temple and came up with the platinum rule. That's called the golden rule. Do unto others as, as you would have done unto yourself. That's the golden rule. Do unto others you would have done unto yourself. Hip hop modified that and now says, do unto others as they will do unto themselves. And, we, and, and, and again, I'm not gonna stretch this out, but do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. It seems right. It seems like, right, do to others what you don't, you know, don't do to other people what you don't want to have done to you. And do to other people what you would like to have done to you. Seems like a, 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 a reasonable um, rule to observe. But when you really dig into it, that rule can only be applied to people who are alike. Because do unto others as, as I would do, um, do unto others as you would do unto yourself, right? So let's say I will kill myself. I'm with it. I'm with killing myself. This then says I can kill you. Do unto others as you would do unto yourself. That's also kind of um, 
imperialist because what, what, what I want for me may not be what you want for you. So what I do for me and what I want for me is what I'm going to do for you. So that means it's all about me. Do unto others as you would do unto yourself. So the way in which I treat myself, the way in which I do me, the way in which I care for me, that is my catalyst. That is my motivation for dealing with you. I'm not dealing with you as you. I'm dealing with you according to what I want for myself. It's still back to imperialism. But if you're living in Nazareth at the time, and we all Nazarenes, we got the same God, we speak the same language. Your sister is my aunt. My aunt is your brother. You know, whatever. we all know each other. So the way in which I treat me is the way I'm going to treat you because we all want people. I'm going to do unto myself the way I want, the way you, the way I want you to treat me is the way I'm going to treat you. The way I treat, the, what I want for myself is how I'm going to treat you. Because what I want for myself, you want for yourself. The way I treat myself is the way you want me to treat you and is the, and it is the way you treat yourself. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Don't do to people what you don't want to have happen to you. That seems fair. In fact, there's a little karma to that too. Don't do to other people what you don't want to happen to you. But again, what's your motivation to act? What's your human nature here? Your human nature is still, I'm not really dealing with you. I'm still dealing with me. I'm still only, the, the whole operation is me. And I'm saying, I don't want this, so I'm going to deal with you like that. I do want this, so I'm going to deal with you like that. There's no surrendering of yourself to the other person. And that's what we can see, the militaristicness in that statement, the imperialness in that statement. You're not surrendering to the other person, which is the hip-hop platinum rule, which is, do unto others as they would do unto themselves. Do unto others as they would do unto themselves. I'm not going to treat you the way I want to be treated. I'm going to treat you the way you want to be treated. How do you want to be treated? I want to be treated like this. Okay, that's how I'm getting down with you. If it's in my power to treat you the way you want to be treated. Seems like a reasonable prospect here but others would argue that no you have to surrender this is the this is the talk of the servant this is the talk of the one who is serving do unto others as they would have done unto us to themselves treat people the way they treat themselves controversial so the other person smoking the crack pipe crack pipe Head crack, head crack. He thought it was whack, smoked up the stack. Now that person comes to you with the crack pipe in hand, says, yo, can you give me $20 for the next hit? Do unto others as they will do unto themselves. Here's your 20. Somebody else be like, that's crazy. You know he's smoking the crack. And you gonna give him the twenty dollars anyway? And you know he's smoking the crack. You gonna give him the twenty dollars anyway, so he can go and smoke more crack. But here's the rule: Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge another person's life? Now I can tell you, man, you shouldn't do that, man. Let me get you some help. Why don't you stay here with me? I could even come in with some intervention and lock your ass in a room. But still, this is all what I want. It's still all what I want. Me imposing my will on the other person. That's the imperialness of it. That's the, that's the piece that's in there. No, you a crackhead? You an alcoholic? We buy your next joint, right? That's how you treat yourself, right? Right. So let me treat you the way you treat yourself. I don't have to treat you the way I treat me. And I'm not expecting you to treat me like you treat yourself. No, here's how I treat me. Do unto others as 
they will do unto themselves. Treat people the way they want to be treated, not how you want to treat them. Now, of course, everything I say could be debated. It's a philosophical point. I'm expanding your, your intelligence. I want you to see both sides of stories. I want you to be able to expand your intelligence to understand all, all, understand all. This is the central fact in the secret of the origin of society and the justification of justice. End quote. In this case, Socrates' case, I'm sorry, uh, Plato's case, um, in, in this case, social justice is based upon every citizen having the ability to pursue and express their innate purpose and the liberty to reach for the excellence his, her purpose demands. Plato reminds us here that, quote, social institutions are to be accounted for by reference to the desires and impulses of natural man, end quote. Aristotle agrees, quote, the state comes into being for the sake of life. It exists for the sake of the good life. End quote. When you read Aristotle, you'll see these constant references to the good life. The purpose of philosophy is the good life, to live the good life. Uh, the purpose of uh, even slavery uh, is for the master to live a good life. Um, uh, all of that is uh, uh, the good life. And there's a whole thing of what the good life is, you know, peace, prosperity, all this type of stuff. Um, so on. Um, <clears throat> for the sake of the good life, end quote. But this is how many, but this is how any of the, but is this how any of the central social institutions of the United States behave and approach the impoverished part of the society they serve? Of course not. These institutions serve the interests of oppression and this is why they too are struggling to survive and grow in today's changing world. Let me also uh, say real quick, there's a landscaper outside, even as I talk to you right now. So if you're hearing some buzzing uh, behind me, maybe you're not hearing it, but if you hear some buzzing behind me, it'll, it'll stop in a minute. I guess the house um, next door, or whatever, is having their landscaping uh, done and it's bleeding in on, on what we're doing here. Uh, uh, it, it'll end in a minute. <clears throat> um, let's 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 make sure we understand this okay but this is how any of the central social institutes but is this matter of fact, let, let, let me go back and make sure you got this 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 is aristotle quote the state comes into being for the sake of life it exists for the sake of the good life end quote but is this how any of the central social institutions of the united states behave and approach the impoverished part of the society they serve? Of course not. These institutions serve the interests of oppression. And we went over what oppression is. I'm not pointing a finger here. This is what is going on. Of course not. These institutions serve the interests of oppression. And this is why they too are struggling to survive and grow in today's changing world. That's why all these institutions are struggling because the root of them is oppression. They're not dealing with real or truth or justice. They're not dealing with that. They're dealing with assimilation, imperialism, colonialism, hiding crimes, trying to survive as a criminal or as a criminal organization. Hip hop can do better. Hip hop can and will do better than this. Much better than this. But first, we must establish a state of peaceful harmony under a constituted authority like the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. We're going to highlight this. Such constituted authority begins here with us. We are our own natural authority. But when we break the laws of our own nature and existence, 
we strip ourselves of all authority to govern even ourselves. Let's highlight that. We're highlighting 73, paragraph 73. This is so important. And it's so important, I'm gonna read it again. Um, this is so important because when you, to, to truly understand law, to truly understand law, you have to understand your community, your community. Not these laws imposed on you by a government. Now their laws are right too. Let me also say that I'm not all against government, you know, against government laws. That's not what we're preaching here. We're preaching the formation of society based on law. But we can see that the societies that we live in are not based on no law. They're not really, they're supposed to be. They got these laws, they got principles, but then nobody's following them. So the revolutionary strategy then is not to be, be become more lawless. The strategy is to become more lawful because law is right. So if nobody following the laws, then nobody right. And that's why you're struggling. That's why you're weak. The one who follows the law is strong and can overcome oppression. Do you hear what I'm saying? They're making us break the law so we can stay oppressed. Ah, do you see it? They're making us, they're promoting lawlessness so that we can stay oppressed. The minute the society follows the law, the entire government must quit. It must quit. This is the true revolution. And all of them go to jail. The entire U.S. government, the Senate, the Congress, all of them, unless they can prove otherwise, they are all guilty of crimes. And that's why we, as, a, as the United States, is in the situation we in. No one's following the law. Everyone's doing what they want. That, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with, I just want what I want. I just want my political party or, or my religious view or my cultural view or my financial view to prevail. <laughs> I don't care that it hurts you. Not having it hurts me. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't care about you. And this is not society. I don't care about you. That's not society. That's something else. That's something else. But it's not a society, a united group of people. It is not a community. It is not a nation. It's more like gangs and organizations. Um, imposing their will on you that that's really what we had gangs and and if you want to say you know um i say organization but that's what a gang is is an organization uh and and and, and vice versa you know a gang is a is what a criminal organization and an organization is a legally established organization ah, whatever it is you know but what we're dealing with is again even in law enforcement we're not dealing with lawful people. We're not dealing with ethical people. So the institution of law enforcement is corrupted from the people itself. They are breaking their own laws. We're not breaking the law first. They're breaking the law first. And when they break the law, the law comes to us weak. And then we break it and make it even weaker. And then we weaken ourselves down to the level of now being incarcerated. 2.5 million children, uh, uh, 2.5 te million teenagers arrested every year in this country. Every year. 7,000 kids a day. Today, 7,000 teenagers were arrested. Today. We can't do no better than this. We, we can't do no better than this. We have to live like this, right? Wrong. This is why we're studying this right here. And this is the beginning of society. This is the beginning of real revolution. It ain't about running up and down the street with a gun or trying to put a picture of Huey P. Newton on your wall. That's not revolution. 
Revolution is first. We must teach our people what the revolution is first. Teaching is the beginning of any revolution. And that's why we're here. This is a bloodless revolution too, by the way. This is a, a revolution in consciousness. And I'm not saying that to avoid the bloodshed. Not at all. We may have to go there. But that's not the first thing, even according to our own principles, principle 13. We reserve war as a final solution after all other diplomatic, uh, 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 all kind of diplomatic ways have been um, exhausted. So we're not talking about war and bloodshed here. We're talking about true revolution, which is first a revelation. First, you have to you have to understand something. Hey, understand the reason we live in under such oppression is because the people who are supposedly following the rules, beginning with the legislators themselves, are not following the rules. So the society has no reference for law because the lawmakers are not following the rules. So there's no reference for, for what we should be doing. And there's no reference. And here's even going deeper with you. Even if the lawmakers were following their own laws, it would only mean the enslavement of the entire American population, which is why they're not following their own laws. If they followed American law, we'd all be locked up, really. Because this is the country itself, uh, the United States itself was founded on criminality, robbery, murder. It's not the only thing that founded America. It's not. America was founded on some beacons of light as well. Real people put down a life to make sure this experiment worked. But that's not what we're experiencing. We're not experiencing the, the good of America. More and more each day and every year, we seem to be going down and down and down and down and down. The crimes are getting worse and worse and worse. The corruption is more blatant, more blatant, more blatant. And people are sitting back complacent, complacent, complacent. I'm making a new song. That's <laughs> another. You should be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Why the people are complacent, 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 and the time you were just wasted and wasted. <laughs> Where's my recorder? Hold up. I should record that. Oh, I just did. Okay, there it is. Um. Uh. Let me get back to this lesson real quick. Um. So, so I want to read the highlight one more time. Hip hop can and will do better than this, much better than this. But first, here it is, y'all. Here it is, y'all. But first, we must establish a state of peaceful harmony under a constituted authority, a written, a page, something that we could see, a constituted authority. We as a group came together and made this. Like the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace that wasn't written by one person. A whole bunch of us as hip hoppers got together and the notes from previous meetings and summits and what people said and all of that was, was crunched down into this document, the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. It's the only constituted authority hip hop has. It's the only one. So we might as well get with it. And it's beautiful. I, I've been practicing it for 21, 22 years. And it is it has never failed me. The attitude of the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace places you above those without rules, those without laws, those without ordinances, those without a peaceful condition. They're running around right now can't figure themselves out bugging because they have no rules. They have no laws. They ain't following nobody rules. I ain't following no laws. Then you on your own and I hope you good. I hope you good. And because you don't have to follow nobody rules, you ain't got to follow nobody laws. Okay. You don't, but if, but, but law 
is a fact of life. And if you're not following, you know, the laws of your community, then what law are you following? You know, breathing is a law. All five of your senses are laws. This is what nature it wants you to have. All five of your senses are law. The, the operation of your entire body is based on law. Everybody following the law is how you live. The sun, or should I say, the earth spinning and revealing the sun every 20, every 12 hours, revealing the sun and taking it away. These are laws. The earth is following laws. These are laws of the universe, so to speak. And so those that don't recognize law, they don't recognize nature, they don't recognize reality. You're somewhere else, and this is where oppression comes from. You know, it doesn't come from somebody being unjust toward you. It comes from you being outside of justice. If you're in justice, then nobody can be in, unjust to you or unjust to you. If you're in justice, I am justice. I live justice. I, I follow rule and law. I live justice. Then half, more 90% of your problems are over. Now, now, you're not even going to be where the cops are. You're not even going to be where the court is. You're not even going to, it's like you're not even going to, nothing. You know, you're never going to get arrested because you're the one following the law. Look how simple it really is. Like, and then of course, look how, look how horrible it really is because, because if you notice most police misconduct, most of it, 90% of it begins with us breaking their laws. 90% of it. Something we were doing that was against their ordinance, not ours, not Native American ordinances. We didn't break no Mexican laws. We didn't break no Haitian laws. We broke this white law. And so now the brutality comes. You could avoid that whole thing. You could avoid the whole thing by just being a law abiding, a law abiding citizen yourself and not law abiding just to the constitution, although you should be that too. Know the constitution, study it, read it and try to be in line with it. It's not a bad document. It's not a bad document. Although uh, the other side to that is um, William Lord Garrison, if I may call his name, abolitionist, William Lord Ga Garrison from back in the days, he said the Constitution was a contract with hell. <laughs> when the Constitution was written, William Lord Garrison stood up. He's the abolitionist. He said, all the people in the room are devils and slavers. How y'all writing a liberty for all and all? Y'all slaving people. William Lord, a white man. William Lord Garrison, and last time I checked, he was white. Stood up, gave his life to black freedom too, by the way. Big up to William Lord Garrison, Lord Garrison, uh, Lloyd Garrison. And so he said, no, the Constitution is a covenant with hell. <laughs> he had a whole bunch of stuff to say about it. But the, the, his last line was like, this is a covenant with hell. And he had more to say. But that's the other side of it. I still suggest you read the Constitution. It's the land in which you live in. This is the law of the land, like they say. The law of the land. And so... You know, read the Constitution, at least know some of its laws, know, know what it's about. Uh, look at some of the commentaries. There's really good films on the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution. There's all types of people discussing the U.S. Constitution from the United States Supreme Court justices uh, are on to uh, 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 constitutional professors uh, and so on. It's a fascinating document. You should really... And, and the... Um, ah! The Declaration of Independence. Um, you should also know something about the Declaration of Independence. And just to go even further with you, the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, the Gettysburg Address. These are the three documents 
uh, in American legal history uh, that pretty much sums up the, the legal um, meat of America. Um, to understand the spirit of these documents, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, that some, some even people throw in um, George Washington's farewell address as well. When he was leaving the presidency, his farewell address, some people throw that in, some people throw in Lincoln's uh, Gettysburg Address. Of course, the uh, Declaration of Independence is rhetoric, it's not law. It's rhetoric, it's poetry, basically. Uh, but it's part of the United States. It's what got the party started. And, and we will read also over 50 people that signed the Declaration of Independence were black people or, or Native Americans, people of color is what you should say. They were people of color, they were not white people. Uh, the Declaration of Independence was signed by people they were not white. There was a whole kinds of black, Native Americans, Latino. Everybody was saying we could we could do this with America, and that's really where W. E. B. Du Bois and others are actually coming from. With their we love America and America this, and we need to integrate and all of this type of stuff. They're coming from these types of having knowledge of this as well. That black folk created the United States of America too, and we're getting cheated out of our citizenship by white racism and white supremacy. So again, you know, stretch your head out a little bit and understand the argument of Dr. King and Malcolm X and Kwame Ture, Stokely Carmichael. Understand the argument uh, all the way around because you're getting hit from all sides. So it's not one argument you need to understand or overstand. Um, um, but first we must establish a state of peaceful harmony under a constituted authority like the hip hop declaration of peace. Such constituted authority begins here with us. And I would say the temple of hip hop, we the only ones dealing with this in the world. Begins here with us. We are our own natural authority. This is where we're going to see this word a lot now. Natural authority. But when we break the laws of our own nature and, and exist, we break in the laws of our own nature and existence. This is what it really means to break a law. That you going against your own nature, you going against your own existence. When we break the laws of our own nature and existence, we strip ourselves of all authority to govern, to govern even ourselves. We can't even govern ourselves. That's why the strategy to overcome an oppressive government is to follow their laws. Follow their laws, because they're not following them. That's why they're oppressive. If they were following their own laws, we would all be in our rightful place. Or in America's sense, we probably wouldn't be because the root of this whole thing is about imperialism and slavery. And that's where these Republicans, as you see, want to take us back to. Democrats, too. I, you know, they're all the same people, really. Uh, but they want to, this, this, po the politics of America, they want to take us back there. They want to take us back to their white colonial culture. And this is, and, and it's a shame to see black folk riding with it. <laughs> like, like, dude, don't you understand like what's about to go down? No, I'm just on Fox News. So uh, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna talk the line, I'm gonna say what I gotta say, I'm gonna say, cause it's a career issue for me. Okay, we saw you with the Confederate army in the Civil War. We saw you on the side of Pharaoh when we were trying to get free. We, or, you know, whatever size you take, you know, we, we saw you with the Hebrews <laughs> trying to destroy a nation. Terrorists trying to destroy a nation. We saw you, you know, we saw you, basically. We've already seen you. And that's why I say about studying our fathers and our mothers and our forefathers. And study them. Study them. And see the mistakes they made and don't make them for yourself today. See their triumphs and repeat them. 
we have a constituted authority here at the Temple of Hip Hop. It's called the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. It's actually the gospel of hip hop is our constituted authority. You can read it, you can see it, you can agree or disagree. You can walk away from it, but you know what we about. You know what we about. And this is, and if you don't know, here it is. That's a constituted authority. We're the only organization within hip hop within the world that has a constituted authority in hip hop's culture. Others did not do this work. And I say that proudly, not to put anybody down, but to shout the temple of hip hop real quick. Big up to the temple of hip hop. We did the work. That's why we have the knowledge and the authority. We don't throw the authority around like we some type of tyrants. That's not what we do. In fact, we're servants. The authority is used to lift people up. To lift people up, you got to be under them. To lift something up, you come from the under up. You're lifting it up. So understand what justice is. Understand what governance is for us, hip hop. We are the real public servants. That's what a politician is supposed to be, a public servant. But nobody's serving the public. So they're not the real politicians. So we, we have the opportunity to become that. The seat is vacant. They're not following the laws. So the, the law seat is vacant. They're not following the laws, so they can't govern. That means government is vacant. The idea of government in America is vacant. No one's in the government. Everyone's in a clique, forcing their view on another clique. But no one is the government. That means we, hip hop, have an opportunity to slide right in and govern ourselves and possibly everybody else too. Because I believe that everyone prospers under a hip hop governance. And I'm not just saying, I'm not, no I'm not a candidate for any political office, but I do say that with a, with a candidate's mentality under hip hop. And when I say under, meaning we're gonna put law and culture above everything. Okay, above everything is law and culture, period. So we under it. That's what makes us equal. We all under our understanding of our own laws. When I look at you, you're following the law. You could trust me, I'm following the law. I could trust you, you following the law. We like each other now because we're both following law. I don't have to like you personally. I don't have to like you emotionally. I don't have to like you professionally. I like you as a citizen of our nation. I like you because you say you hip hop too. Like I found somebody else willing to say, breaking MC and graffiti on DJ and beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and street entrepreneurialism. I found somebody else willing to look at hip hop as three natures, not just one. I found somebody else who's holding on to the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. I found somebody else who put the one after their name. I found somebody, this is, na this is nation building. This is society. This is community. This is culture. So make sure you highlight paragraph 73. As attuned hip hoppers, we invite law and order. In fact, hip hop is already a social order unto itself. Our people are just presently ignorant of it. Presently, hip hop is a social class in the United States. We are a distinct group of, Amer we are a distinct group in American society. We can be called the lower orders or a lower order. Not because we are looked at as being of a lower class of people, but because our order comes under the authority of United States laws and ordinances. 
However, we are treated like a lower class of people simply because we act ignorantly and independently of the general well-being of our neighboring cultures and communities. That's the truth. That's the truth. Hip hop, you better hear me. And and on this thing, on on this level here, black folk got to hear me as well. But we're discussing hip hop. We're discussing all of us in this culture. Look at it. However, we are treated like a lower class of people. I'm talking about hip hop. Everybody associated with hip hop, regardless of race, age, gender, religion, all of us in this culture, we are treated like a lower class of people simply because we act ignorantly, ignore. Antly, and independently of the general well-being of our neighboring cultures and communities. Meaning that if we was of service to other communities, they would have no choice but to be in service to us. They would respect the help and assistance that we're giving. And, and to continue that help and assistance, they would offer us the help and assistance we would need. But because we're not even thinking about anything but integrating into white society. Hip hop ain't even thinking about integrating into um, Native American society. Native Americans have sovereignty. Native Americans, if you're listening to me right now, okay, you guys know you have sovereignty. You're the only ones here on this, on this um, land mass. You got sovereignty. Now, some Native Americans, you sit down, like my people over at the Hopis, they'll sit down and tell you, well, Chris, sovereignty ain't all that. <laughs> you know, they'll tell you in a minute, this government is crazy, okay? And the way they dealing with people and then their own internal, they got Indian councils, you know, to, to be selling their own people out and they got to fight their own fight. And the shaman priest is not as respected as the Catholic priest. And the, 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 they got their own thing going on, okay? But... My point here is we're not interested in uh, as, as hip hop and, and not that we're not. I'm only going to say that quick because we are interested in this. We are interested. Hip hop as a nation is interested in signing a treaty with the Hopi nation. That we will recognize each other's laws and we pass each other's laws to each other. And we say, here's the hip hop declaration of peace from hip hop. And it's peace. And then the Hopi or the Ap Apache or the Cherokee or whoever will come forward. And maybe not Apache and Cherokee. I love you guys too, but you guys got a whole, y'all hooked up with the government and everything else. But hopefully we can work with you too, you know, uh, and, and, and other nations. I'm just saying, you know, all the surviving Native American nations, hip hop should be, uh, hip hop as a nation should be looking to sign treaties with these nations. We don't need nobody. We don't need no government approval to set up a meeting with our Native American sisters and brothers and say, we hip hop recognize you as the true sovereigns in this land. All of us, white, black, all hip hop recognizes you. And here's our declaration of peace. And I, I personally would ask for forgiveness, me personally. I would come up and say, can I receive your forgiveness for anything that my people may have done to your people while we were here on your land? And the Native Americans are quick to forgive. They love these kinds of conversations where we're coming together and reconciling. Forget me. It, it was Native Americans that came up with the term bury the hatchet. That's their term. That's their term philosophy, bury the hatchet, not keep pulling it out, <laughs> start chopping. But after we done chopped at each other, let's bury the hatchet. That's Native American principle from way back. We hip hoppers should be going there with a hatchet. We both should have one, Native American and us. And we literally put that hatchet in the ground and bury it and deliver to each other, each other's lords, and say, yo, we recognize you, you recognize us. I know what, what your people supposed to be doing in my community, 
And you know what my people are supposed to be doing in your community. Now we both are strengthened. You don't need no government for that. You don't need no vote for that. Just recognize yourself as who you are for real and go with the power of your own self-existence and go before the Mexican community and say, Mexico, we recognize you and we want to, hip hop wants to offer to the entire nation of Mexico our declaration of peace that Mexico will deliver to us its constitution. As it, <laughs> you don't need no America. You don't need no nothing, okay? You don't need nothing to do that. All you need is intelligence. That's it. And not smartness, understanding, understanding. But if you, if you assimilate it into white society, and of course, you know, I can go down the list. We need that Haitian exchange. We need a, an, an Asian exchange. Uh, and, you know, Asia's big. I mean, you got China, you know, everything from India to China to Thailand to Korea to, you know, you know, all of that. And hip hop is everywhere, okay, there too. Now, I don't know if the Chinese government gonna offer us something. I don't know, but you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Make a phone call real quick. Be like, listen, <laughs> this is hip hop. And we want the Chinese government to recognize us and we will recognize you. Let's exchange constitutions or let's exchange constituted authorities. You know what we about? You know, we know what you about. Let's do this. This, this is what our census is, is going to be about as well later on. This is later on talk. We're talking about this now because we're building our community. We're building our community. So we're talking about this now. But after we do our worldwide census, you're going to see. First of all, we're going to see. We're going to redo the map. We're going to redo the map. Like imagine a map of the world right now, right? Look at the map of the world, you know, in, in your mind or if you can look and pull it up. Map of the world. So you see, Amer you know, they got the, the, the you know, Canada, America, uh, South America. You got Africa. Well, you just got Africa, actually. Uh, and then, of course, the top Morocco. You got Europe. Um, you know, then over there, you got Russia over here. You going up, you know, uh, Sweden and, um, and Finland, all that. So, so, and then, of course, I mean, I, uh, um, I can't forget um, uh, Australia at the bottom and so on. When we do our, our census, okay, we're going to redo the map of the world. And hip hop will have its own map. So you will look at, a, at, a, at the map of the world and it won't be shaped. Africa won't be shaped like that. Africa will be shaped according to where, where hip hop is in it. America won't be shaped the way America is. America will be shaped according to where hip hop is in it. This is a new mapping. It's a new mapping, but it's an old mapping. It's the way societies, it's the way nations function. We have to see ourselves in the world for ourselves. There's better maps to make. We already made a better calendar. <laughs> uh, but we there's better maps to make. There's better calendars to make. We don't even have to call uh, Monday, Monday, or Tuesday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Wednesday. You know, G. Simone already got the Mindful Monday, Trustful Tuesday, you know. We could just say mindful, trustful, wonderful, thankful. Why you got to say Monday? Who told you to say that? Why are you saying that? These are the things that expand your mind, expand your mind, get you outside of white colonialism, get you outside of that imperialism, get you outside of the assimilation that you've been dealing with for so long. You gotta be able to think about other people. White people are not the only people. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's silly, isn't it? It's silly, isn't it? What I'm saying, we know this, but we don't act it. 
scholars I'm talking about too. Scholars do not act like Haitian people exist. Like we supposed to be going to Haiti or to the Haitians in America. Like why clap even in hip hop? Like we not, so, who also ran for office uh, in, in Haiti too. We're not supposed to be going to Wyclef, let's say, on behalf of the Haitian people and exchanging documents and saying, we recognize Haiti within hip hop. Anything hip hop can do, we'll do. Anything Haiti can do for us, it'll do. But we are making our, our we are, are setting up our relationships with other nations, not with other corporations. We don't need to sign recording contracts with other corporations. That's all. We did that when we were kids. Now we're grown up adults. We need to sign treaties with nations, not recording contracts with some joker. Uh, but we could sign, but, and, and it's the same contract too, too, by the way. You know, it's not totally the same. But like, you know, say we sign a contract with, um, you know, some, some poor country, like Haiti. <laughs> Let me go back to y'all, okay? We signed a contract with Haiti. Now, Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the world, okay? But compared to hip hop on the ground, Haiti's rich. <laughs> okay, don't sleep on Haiti. Haiti got more stuff than us, okay? So don't sleep on Haiti. Haiti's like the IMF to us hip hop. Okay, we are small little culture in the world trying to make our way. We are begging Haiti, please help us. Please help us. We got white clap. <laughs> We're doing white clap, you know, in prize and everybody. Please help us, Haiti. Haiti's a billion dollar um, a nation though. Don't sleep on Haiti. Now Haiti's a poor country, just like the other countries in the world. You know, Venezuela is a poor country, but the people eating every day. They still a country. They still got billions. They still got stuff stacked away and resources. Uh, Haiti, the intellectual resources in Haiti are through the roof. Okay, the intellectual resources. Haiti will break you down intellectually. That's where you want to go study, <laughs> especially black culture. They got it in Haiti. They will bring that voodoo out on you and show you the Eurishas and all of that. And, and, oh man, it gets wild, but intellectually, it's not just the money. Just because a, a nation is poor, doesn't mean that they can't offer your nation something. And this is what we gotta begin to think. We gotta begin to think like this. You know, begin to think like this. Go to Venezuela. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me say, let me say within the, in, in the, um, the sphere of Western society then, okay? Let's go to France. Let's go to Spain. Let's go to Germany. Let's go to Poland. Let's go to Russia. Let's go to these places where hip hop is existing and say, yo, Russia, do you recognize us? Because if you don't, that's gonna make us your enemy. Not if America or this kind of other stuff, we could deal with that on our American citizenship side. We could deal with you. But no, on this hip hop citizenship side, like, like, like the way Christianity is not even being discussed. Okay, like, like, like if I, a black man, said, um, "I'm going to Russia to do a concert for Russians," America would probably go through the roof. Oh my God, what are you doing? You're going over to work with this brutal, ruthless regime. That's I'd probably get chewed out for doing a concert in Russia during these times. But, but Christianity can still be practiced in Russia and your Ukraine and America and Europe, Islam as well, Judaism as well, can be practiced across the board in these nations. These nations are fighting each other over economic issues. They fighting each other over land and economic issues. NATO encroaching on what Russia feels is its territory. And that's their own little argument. Hip hop is not so caught up in that. That's not our argument. 
America, you're not our enemy. Russia, you're not our enemy. Poland, you're damn sure not our enemy. And Ukraine, you're not our enemy. So we ain't got nothing to do with that fight. And that's the stance also of the Christian, of the Jew, of the Muslim, of the Buddhist. We ain't got nothing to do with that. There's Christians practicing in Russia. There's Christians practicing in Ukraine. There's Christians practicing in the United States. There's Christians practicing all over. Well, hip hop is to be viewed in the same way. Same way. We are a nation without a landmass. We are a global culture without a physical reality to it. So hip hop is practiced in Ukraine. Hip hop is practiced in Russia. Hip hop is practiced in the United States. Hip hop is practiced in Africa. Hip hop is practiced everywhere. So as that culture, we have to go with treaties to all of these different individual organizations and be strategic about it, about who we think we can help and who we think can help us. We're talking about being the lower orders of a society. We are an order. We are an order in this society. We're just out of order. So the society comes and says, we got to lock them up. We got to shoot them. We got to harass them. We got to keep them in the order that we want because they don't even have an order for themselves. However, reading 75 now, However, we are treated like a lower class of people. So I, I read this, so I'm just doing it again. However, we are treated like a lower class of people simply because we act ignorantly and independently of the general well-being of our neighboring cultures and communities. To be a respected society, other communities have to benefit from you. And so far, other communities are benefiting from hip-hop. Hip-hop just has not announced itself in this way. We are not yet considered a higher order in the sense of being a high-minded people simply because we don't act as such amongst ourselves or amongst others. Our social behavior tells the world that we care little for ourselves and for everyone around us. Look at that. Our social behavior in the world, okay, our social behavior in the world tells the world that we care little for ourselves and everyone around us. We are literally out of order. Such a condition is simply not healthy for us or the American people, and it's time we both realize this as we continue to grow up. As a people, we cry out for justice, but we cannot cry out or ask for that which we are not willing to give even to ourselves. Know this, we are the justice we seek and we, we are the justice we seek. And when we realize this, injustice shall have no more refuge in our community. Hip hop itself is social justice. Hip hop itself is social justice. And so to be hip hop, the hip hopper must be just. Let's just, let's underline that. Matter of fact, no, go ahead and get the whole 77. Highlight the whole 77. As a people, we cry out for justice, but we cannot cry out or ask for that which we are not willing to get to, willing to give even to ourselves. Like people out there picking it, no justice, no peace. Are you out there picking it, arguing, and this, that, and the other? Then you go right home and start gossiping about the person next door. You go right home after you root for somebody you don't even know. Dude got shot, dude got her hemmed up or thrown in the back of a police van and killed or paralyzed. You know, you know the stories. We don't even know these people, okay? We're hearing about it on TV, okay? And hearing about it in social media and so on. And we put more energy into fighting for a cause that we heard about on TV than the person in your house 
reconciling with the person you're arguing with in your own home. The person right next door to you, you have nothing to say to them. In fact, you don't even like them. Yet, you're saying, I'm, I stand for justice. No, if you stand for justice, you stand for justice all the time. All the time. Not just when you see something on TV or see so you, you see something online. Now you're going to pattern your whole life by what you saw on a phone. Now it's time to think. And the thinking starts with your character, a character of justice. <laughs> you have a character that wants justice. Then again, all the other laws are followed automatically is habit. You don't even have to think about law because your character is justice. But that character of justice means that I'm going to give that justice to my per myself first. And I'm going to give that justice to my family. And I'm going to give that justice to my friends. And then to my neighbor and my outer community. The justice that I'm crying for is the very justice that I live. It should not be that the justice that I'm crying for, I don't live it. I'm still searching it. I'm still looking for it. That's why I'm protesting, because I don't have it. I don't see the justice around me. So I'm protesting. No. If you don't see the justice around you, be it. And once you are the justice, following law, following your own ordinances, presenting your own. This is what I follow, y'all. And people see that you follow it. You become the justice that you don't see in your community. You become the justice that other people don't have in their community. I mean, not to talk about myself, but to be self-aware. Imagine what hip-hop would be without KRS-One. And I say that and we're learning here. I'm not saying it's, you know, like I'm all that. <laughs> you know how I feel. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. Go deep with me. Go deep with me. Imagine hip hop without me. And everything that I did, everything that everything was done, everything, the whole 30 years. Imagine if I was killed with Scott LaRock. What would hip hop be? Who would be discussing it like this? What, 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 what would it have become? I don't say this for no grandizement, you know this. I say this for self realization. See, I know myself. I know people say all the time, I know myself, I got knowledge of self. Then you see the action. And nah, you don't know yourself. Look at how you act and then look at how you talk. You saying this, but when it's time to act, you, you acting like a slave. You saying you king, but when you act, it's slave. You saying, my ancestors built the pyramids. But your actions can't even erect a tent. You're not even interested in, in anything that the pyramid builders were interested in. And it's this kind of hypocrisy, even contradiction, that the thinking person has to constantly clean within themselves. I'm talking, but is my talk matching my actions? And we say it all the time. Put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, yeah, and you, you, and yee, yee, and yeah, yeah. But we still go ahead and do it. We still go ahead and act this way. We still, this is what we do it. So, so, so again, I, I want you to highlight 77. This is that piece right here. I know who I am in hip hop. Therefore, 
I am motivated to continue being the person I don't see. That, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. If somebody else was doing this, I'd be doing something else. Straight, straight up. I would join that person. I'd be one of those people who would have joined in with that person and said, look, I, I'm just part of um, this guy's whatever. In this case, Temple of Hip Hop. And say the Temple of Hip Hop was talking about somebody else. I would just join the Temple of Hip Hop and say, yeah, this, I agree. This is this, this, this what it is. But I don't see nobody do, from, from the time, from before I even made my first record, I was looking at hip hop. And I said, I don't see no teachers. Now, of course, there was Melly Mel. And of course, there was Africa Bambata. And of course, there was Kumo D and the Treacherous Three. These people were teaching. They were actually teaching. They didn't call themselves teachers. They didn't hold themselves out as teachers, you know, and this kind of thing. You know, they, that wasn't the profession of them. They, they didn't say in hip hop, we are the teacher or the teachers, but they were teaching. They were teaching. And so I say that to say that as I'm looking at hip hop, I'm like, yo, there's nobody in this culture that's concerned with the culture. And not that you're not concerned with it, to be concerned with the culture. I had to study. I had to study 30 years. Come on now, keep it real with me. I had to spend millions of dollars, millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to achieve the knowledge that I now enjoy. I had to travel millions of miles around this planet to achieve the knowledge that I enjoy. But that was a conviction back in the days. I said, look, I'm going to be hip hop's teacher. I'm gonna be the teacher. And I'm gonna be the best teacher I can be. And I'm gonna set up an organization that, that spawns teachers forever in hip hop because they're gonna learn from the first teacher. And we're going to record our sessions. And we're going to write books. And we're going to put stuff on. I thought about this back in 86. And then when I did Criminal Minded, all through the album, announcing myself as the teacher, as the teacher, as the teacher. From the time I came out, first record, South Bronx, or first hit record, South Bronx. I am a teacher and others are king. Made that distinction quick, right at the front. So I became the person I did not see. And we have to follow the same technique. If you don't see justice in your community, you have to become that. The reason you're seeing it is because it's you that must become it. If you don't see hip hop in your community, then it's you that must become the hip hop in your community. If you don't see the declaration of peace or you don't see the gospel of hip hop or you don't see any of our teachings in your community, it is you that must put them there. This is not about sitting here and saying, I don't see it, so it must not exist <laughs> and going about your day. I don't see it, so it must have, I don't, I. No, if you don't see it, it's because you have not placed it there. And the same thing with justice. This is, this, is, this is the same thing with justice. If you don't see justice, put it there. If you don't see no love, put it there. If you don't see no forgiveness, even, if you agree, he killed 50 people. We know he did it. He did it with no remorse. He deserves the death penalty right now. 50 people killed from this idiot. Put, sit this dude down in the chair. Not even the injection, give him the chair. Even if that's the case, the wise hip hop, still argues for forgiveness. But wait, maybe he's mentally, does he have to die though? Is there another way? Is there... 
if you don't see the justice, if you don't see the love, if you don't see the forgiveness, be it's be the reason you don't see it is because you're supposed to be doing it. That's why you're seeing it in the way that you're seeing it. The reason you're looking and saying this is not happening is because you're the one who's supposed to be doing it. And this is why I say I have knowledge of myself. Not on no ego, narcissism, self-centered, self, self, self. No, I just know what I mean to this culture. And therefore, I do the work. I do the work. That's it. That's it. From day one. That's it. I don't got time for the grand guysman and all of that. Just get to the work. That's it. Let's just get to the work. And I know that if we don't do this work, it ain't going to get done. I played that game, too, several times throughout hip-hop. I stopped my work because others said they were going to do it. I said, Hip Hop University. Others said they were going to open a Hip Hop University then. I said, okay, let me yield and do something else. They never did it. Ah, see, you was fronted. A Hip Hop Museum. Somebody else said, I'm going to do it. I said, okay, y'all go ahead. Oh, that's that, that, that. Never did it. Oh, you was fronted. This is this, and then you know later on, of course, the museum comes up. But no, in the early days, you talk about museums in the eighties. Nobody did nothing. We talked about museums in nineteen ninety four. We was arguing with Jacqueline Hines about a museum. But after the argument, nobody went and did the museum, including Jacqueline Hines. Nobody made no museum. And this is the issue. This is the issue right here. We talking. But after the talk, who gets up and does something? And that's what's holding us back. That's what's holding everybody back. That's what's holding everything back. Is we all just talking, nobody doing anything. And that's why the Temple of Hip Hop doesn't aspire to that. That's why we have documents. We have constituted authority and authorities. We do the work. You guys flew in to New York to hear Grandmaster Kaz in Hollywood and others explain hip hop out their own mouth to you. you. You did the physical work. And so nobody could tell you nothing. So what's somebody gonna tell you? Nothing. You actually sat down and ate spaghetti with, with DJ Hollywood. <laughs> like, what? What's somebody supposed to tell you now about what? Nothing. I got my photo with the brother. I was there at 1520. I could tell you what the walls look like. I could tell you what the floor looked like. I was there. No talk. Just, yeah, you know, 1520 is where hip hop started. You ever been there? Um, 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 um. No, the Temple of Hip Hop is offering authentic hip hop education, not just talk. We doing this, okay? We doing this for real. We are doing this. And if you part of the temple of hip hop, that means you're doing it too. You're not sitting here listening to me. You're sitting here listening to me to find out the instruction. You're listening to me so that you could know what the, the communal thought is. You're listening to me for explanation deeper into the gospel of hip hop, deeper into the organization, deeper into what we actually do. And you're listening to me for these reasons. But you yourself are hip hop wherever you are. Wherever you are. If you don't see hip hop where you are, bring it there. Bring it there. And bring our version of hip hop there. Bring the boom back. Bring breaking and seeing graffiti on DJ. Bring that to your community. Not only will you benefit, but hip hop will benefit as well. I just want to read 77 one more time. As a people, and this is where highlighting this, as a people, we cry out for justice, but we cannot cry out or ask for that which we are not willing to give. Uh, we are not willing to give even to ourselves. Know this, we are not, um, know this, 
We are the justice we seek. And when we realize this, that we are the justice that we seek, when we realize this, injustice shall have no more refuge in our community. Look how scientific that line is. We are the justice we seek. And when we realize this, injustice shall have no more refuge in our community. We, again, we are the ones that are causing the oppression in our community. The police are not the, the cause of oppression. They are oppressors, but they're not the cause of it. We are the cause of our own oppression this is what you have to realize. Nobody can oppress you unless you allow them to. Oppression is two way. Somebody coming and giving the oppression and you succumbing to it. We read about this also. You succumb, you ag agreeing with it. Like, okay, I'm oppressed. Uh, that's oppression. Agreeing with oppression is that you're oppressed. When you realize I'm not in, I, I'm not oppressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm not oppressive. I am impressive. Oh man, not killing me today. Alive in me. Uh, I, I am not an oppressor. Why? Because I follow my laws. I follow the laws of my culture first. I'll get to your constitution and all your other stuff later. But first, with me, in my own community, I follow my own laws. If we would follow the laws of our own community, we wouldn't have, you wouldn't have to follow nobody else's laws. In fact, if you think about it, every other community has their own laws, except African American and hip hop. Well, that's not true. Hip hop does have its own laws. It's called the H law. Health, love, awareness, and wealth. It has its own advice and guidance, which are principles. It's called the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. It has a constituted authority. It's called the Gospel of Hip Hop, or just the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. Now, either you take these things seriously, or you don't. Either, either you take your culture seriously, or you don't. None of the people screaming, the U.S. Constitution. None of them were there when it was written. None of them wrote it. Why are they in love with it so much? Because it's part of their culture and part of their uh, traditions. Now, if you, a black person, or somebody that's non-white or non-European white, I should say, if, 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 if you come, wait, I have to, let me be clear with that. If you're not white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, let me be clear. If you're not that, you may be other kinds of white people and that everybody else in the world as well, non-white people. If you're not that, okay, uh, you have your own laws. You, you, chances are your society has its own laws that you follow, that, that you follow. Your society has its own laws that, that you follow. It's your custom, it's your tradition, you, you, uh, and, and by the way, the United States recognizes your laws. Did you hear what I just said? United States recognizes the laws of cultures, even in court. They say, this is the, this is your cultural. Now they they have been known to override cultural laws, but you still have to acknowledge that which you're overriding. You can't override nothing. You're not overriding anything. What is it that you're overriding? I'm overriding your, your ordinances and your codes of conduct. That's war. No nation is just gonna willingly go to war with another nation, violating its laws, unless they're trying to really rob you, invade you, co colonize you, and that's what it is. But no, if you have your own laws and your own customs and your people are following your laws, then that country got to come to you and negotiate and say, okay, again, we do that exchange. Here's my declaration of peace. Where's yours? Here's my constituted authority. Where's yours? But again, if we're not going to follow our own laws, then that's where the oppression starts. That's where it starts. 
You're an unlawful being. You don't cite no law. You don't follow no law. So here comes the white man right for you with a badge and a gun and chains already on him. <laughs> Coming to you and saying, you're going to get one of these. Why? Because you have no nation. You have no law. You have no ordinance, no culture, no nothing. There's nothing even for the police to refer to for you. They can't even say, well, it's this. And you're not acting like this. They can't even say that. They're saying, there's nothing. All we have is our rules on you. And if you break our rules, you're going to jail or I'll kill you right here. But officer, I broke Native American rules. I chopped down that tree over there for no reason. Ah, don't worry about that. We'll get that cleaned up. Whose laws do you follow? Whose laws are you giving authority to? It is just as easy to follow Native American law as it is to follow U.S. constitutional law. Just as easy. When you go to Britain, you follow the Magna Carta. You don't follow U.S. law in Britain. You follow the Magna Carta in Britain. You adopt to that quick. Land in England, boom, I'm in England. Okay, it's Magna Carta out here. This is how we doing it out here. And you with it because you want to be in Britain. You are Native American land. And don't even think about these people. Don't even think about following their laws. You're on their land. And you're not even thinking about following nothing they got to say. All you want to follow is this violent white man law. And oh, by the way, if you don't follow, he'll kill you. Native Americans ain't pushing that. That's why we're not following their laws. Now, if Native Americans said, I'll scalp your ass. You don't, you break one of our laws. I'm going to cut your head off, okay, and wear it. <laughs> okay, then maybe we might go, yo, don't, don't do that there, G. Yo, chill. You might get your head cut off, yo. That's how we got to live? That's how we got to live. The only way we're going to follow laws is if the cop's there with a gun. The only way we want to follow traffic laws is if the cop is there. Then we're willing to slow down. But if the cop ain't there, I want to break the law. I feel good breaking the law. I feel good. I'm getting what I want. That's a child. That's a criminal. You can't be like that and expect to be part of a nation. Now, you could be like that and be an individual. And that's what most people are. But if you're trying to be part of a nation, a citizenry, a culture, a community, a society, if you're trying to be part of that, well, the, the meaning of your citizenship, the what makes you part of the group is that you agree with the group. <laughs> you agree with the group. How do you agree with the group? The laws of the group. The group believes this. The group believes that. The group walks like this. The group talks like that. These are the laws. You agree. So anything coming after that, you're like, whatever. We're going to talk like this. Whatever. I already agree. I already talk like this. So it's now a law that we all should talk like the way I'm already talking. <laughs> okay, fine. That's a great law. I think we should do that law, and I'm willing to follow it because I'm already in. Those are real laws. So if you break those laws, now you get to have your ass beat because you're trying to diss us all, G. We all this. We all say we're going to follow this law. We all benefiting even from this law. Why are you going to destroy the community now by breaking the law that you know we all like? We even like our laws. You're going to break them. Why? Because you wanted to, an extra piece of cake. So you're going to go steal now the cake because you couldn't control that. 
That's how you get excommunicated out of societies. That's how Africans were brutal with it. Brutal with it. You steal it? You get everything here is free. The whole society is free. That was African societies. Everything was free. Imagine that. Imagine a society with no money. Everything was free. Exchange. Imagine that. Imagine going to the supermarket and shopping according to your respect. Like you walk in the supermarket and they say, that is Big Daddy K. He gets to go in and order all types of stuff and, and leave out because he's K. Then somebody else walks in. It's no, you know, no cane, but he's, he's part of the culture. That person walks in. You get you get to shop down this aisle, you know, over over here. Uh, this is Africa. This is original Africa. You get this piece over here. You're not really cane. You you we recognize you though. You're gonna eat. And you're gonna eat well, but you're not gonna get what cane got. You're not going to get with Chuck guy. And why? Because these are the dudes that made it possible for the whole supermarket to be here. That's why they walk in like this. They made it. They killed. Remember that? Remember that tiger that used to come through? And the tiger used to come through every day at 8 o'clock and eat one of our kids. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. We were scared of that tiger, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, look at this guy over here. You, you see, um, this guy lifted. Oh, over here, he calls himself lifted. Well, he's the one that wrestled the tiger and took that fear out of the community. He wears the tiger's hide now. The whole community goes, whoa. That tiger ate my nephew last week. Lifted, fought the tiger and killed it. So my children are safe now, I'm safe. And he's wearing the tiger, which makes us know as a symbol, he is the king. Or who, uh, he's of a high man here because of what he did for the community. That's ancient Africa. That's how you were judged. You were judged on the stories that were told about you. Your family was judged on its reputation. Europe came in and destroyed that because that didn't have a, you know, that wasn't the greatest system either. It's just another system where money's not the issue. Your respect is. How many people you roll with? One person coming in knows I'm going to take one bowl of this and, and two loaves of that. I'm one person. I don't have to be told this and that. Like, like when fruit trees used to grow on, on uh, just out in the open when society was free. You would go and you would pluck fruit knowing that somebody was coming after you. I learned this in, in um, Australia. We were there in 2011. And I saw we was, we was in the middle of Australia, in the outback somewhere. And you would see all through the outback how people shared the resources. Like they shared everything. So you didn't go in with, there's a fruit tree. Let, let's say there's a, a fig tree. There's a lot of figs out there. Native, um, <laughs> yeah, Native Australians uh, eat, eat these figs. And so, so you got this fig tree. There's a lot of figs on the tree. So the mentality of the Aboriginal is I go and I say, wow, there's a fruit tree. Someone else is hungry too. I'm not the only one hungry. This is, the, it, this is, this is their habit. Always thinking about the other person. If, if I pluck the, the, the fruit, let me pluck only what I need and leave the rest of the tree. I only need three of these to be full. Let me take three and leave the hundreds there because somebody else is going to come. I may have killed some sort of musket, a, a deer, something. I eat my portion. And I leave the rest of the deer meat there for whoever may come by, animals included. No hunter eats the whole meat. You eat the choice meat, but you leave the rest, you leave the carcass there for the rest of the animals. The lions do the same thing. They sit, they kill the deer, they eat the choice parts of the deer. Then they leave and the scavengers then come in. 
This is nature's way. Nature's way. So what we have now, though, is that if you have fruit trees in American society, somebody's going to come and take all the fruit and hide it in their house. <laughs> Somebody's going to come even in greed and keep eating the whole goddamn tree until it's gone, okay? Look at the character we're dealing with. And you got to ask yourself, why are there no fruit trees in the United States? They got all these trees all up and down the highways and the cities. These trees are worthless and useless. And I say that respectfully of trees, but they're not yielding no fruit. You can end um, poverty, and hunger in a city by simply planting fruit trees all around the city. But if you plant real trees that are going to yield oranges and lemons and peaches and figs, if you're going to have these trees, then what society you have these trees in? People who are going to spray paint the tree? Graffiti writers? I'm gonna write on the tree while it's growing. We're gonna allow kids to come by and just kick the tree <laughs> when it's in its most vulnerable state. What kind of society do you have to live in for fruit trees to be lined up and down our streets? And you just go and pluck one orange because that's all you need, even two oranges. I pluck two oranges from right off the tree. I'm walking down the street. You see people do it all the time. We don't, but you should. Walk down the street and see people just pluck apples. This thing says low battery. Up, my battery's going. Um, uh, you see people pluck apples uh, uh, right off, right off the um, tree. Hold on, let me just hit this. Yeah, uh, you, you see people pluck apples. You know, it's an apple tree. Apples grow, but they take a minute to grow. The little apple bud and it's green. You gonna yank that off and eat it? Or the apple's green, it's just starting to bud up. Some little kid comes and yanks it off and throws it because you just want to just, you're a kid and just want to mess stuff up. No, how do you, or somebody, some gangster comes along and says, nobody can eat from the tree unless you pay me 10 cents. This is the American society. This is it. I'm not pointing fingers. We're not criticizing our society. We're learning. If we are to have fruit trees lining our streets, we got to be a different society. It's not about the fruit tree. It's about us. Hip Hop City should have fruit trees lined up and down the city. Our, our city should smell like lemons and peaches because there's so many lemons and peaches everywhere. You should not have to go to a supermarket and buy fruits and vegetables. That's a crime. That's a crime. You're supposed to go to a tree for fruit and vegetable. There's supposed to be a place that you could go to and you pick your own uh, tomatoes and ginger and, and cabbage and lettuce and all of that, you go to a place and you pull it out the ground yourself. Why can't we, and I'm gonna say this to the world, maybe you, I'm starting a new business, but nobody's listening to me anyway, so I'll just say. New business, new hip hop business. Grab a patch of land, get land somewhere, and start a garden that people could pay for patches of the garden. So you buy a garden. You don't have to run every five minutes tending this garden. There's a gardener. But you know that real tomato, lettuce, cabbage, potato, onion, carrot, you name it. Uh, all of these are growing in the ground Adult ground, too. Ground that's being taken care of, fertilized, no bullshit in the ground, real shit right there. You should be able to purchase that as part of your monthly bills. I own a patch of land over here. I eat from my patch of land. Patch of land. I get my vegetables and everything from my patch of land. 
buy a tree. I have a tree. I get my lemons. I have a fruit tree. I have an orange tree. Why is nobody offering this as a service? Because it would put the supermarket business out of business. Now, those who are supermarket owners, you may want to consider this yourself. Why are we, why, why can't we grow our fruit right there where we buy it? Why does it have to be imported? N nothing that we're eating requires import. Maybe mangoes and, you know, tropical fruit does have to be imported. If you live in cold areas, um, you might have to bring your fruit forward. But the staples of life, you know, even like bread, like bread, the government should make bread. Like, I said, we should be buying bread. You know, the government should make wheat bread. And you should be able to go to a government building or whatever and just pick up a loaf of bread. It's part of your citizenship. Just a loaf of bread. I'm not giving you no mayonnaise, <laughs> give you no butter, no meat, no nothing. Just a loaf of wheat bread, which is a whole food. Why the government don't do that? Why the government don't just offer us bread? Just bread. Because if I offer you bread, you ain't gonna go to work. If I offer you bread, you're gonna sit and eat the bread and you ain't gonna eat nothing else. Especially if I tell you it's a whole food and it's good for you. <laughs> you're gonna wake up. What the fuck? Why am I eating this meat? <laughs> Why am I eating this fish? Why am I eating anything other than this one whole food? You'll realize I don't have to eat any of this to live and survive. I really just need bread, water, air. Oh, no, wait. Now this is commerce, capitalism, the whole point to colonialism. No, it, it can't work. I have to enslave you. I need you to be my slave. I, I need this. So how am I going to slave you first? I'm going to get you with the salt first. Get on that, slave. Now I'm gonna hit you with the sugar. Get on that. I'm gonna hit you with this, this tobacco. Get on that. I'm gonna come with this weed. Get on that. Of course, the cocaine, heroin, la, 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 la. Get on that. And I'm gonna come with this thing called money. Get on that. These are all addictions. And the true state of slavery is addiction not being forced to work and being whipped and beaten that's psychotic behavior the real meaning of slavery is dependency dependency that's the real meaning of slavery so you got to ask and, and of course we're all dependent upon someone or something so you got to ask yourself how free do you want to be the ultimate freedom is god unattached from everything. But we don't live like that. <laughs> we don't live like that. We all interdependent, as Plato is pointing out. So how free do you want to be is the question, and thus the spiritual uh, um, practice, the spiritual practice. How do you get off salt sugar? You have to have a spiritual practice. You have to come to the realization that you don't need it. Your brain has to come to the realization, I can overcome this. If you haven't come to that realization yet, then you just succumb to it. And a lot of it is pleasure-based. We like pleasure. We all like pleasure. What the hell are we living on this planet for if you're not feeling good about yourself or the planet? So we seek the pleasure, but that's where they get us. Right where your pleasure is, that's where I'm going to put the slavery. And as spiritual beings, we have to know you could have your pleasure, but the word is moderation. In moderation. So you don't go all the way over to where they want you to be, addicted and overdoing things and da-da-da-da-da. No, you can, you can ingest whatever you want. But in moderation, little bit, know when to stop. Know how to see a full fig tree and only take three figs. That attitude, 
see the abundance, but only take what you need and leave the rest. But this desperateness, if I take now, I'm not going to have later. So let me take it all. That's a whole nother person's mentality. It's a whole nother level of mentality. And this is what, 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 what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I'm coming up toward, toward the end of this particular read. We're talking about giving justice to ourselves. We're talking about the way in which to build community is we have to be just to ourselves. We have to follow law, our own laws. We have to first follow our own laws and ordinances and codes. And we have to follow our own culture, the principles of our own culture. We have to follow them first. When we are following the principles of our own culture, then nobody can come in our culture and start dictating. That's how you keep people out of your culture. You have uh, uh, rules and, and uh, laws and uh, principles. And if someone violates your rules, your laws, your principles, you have the right to defend yourself. But if nobody's violating your rules, violating your laws, you have no right to defend yourself. You have no rules. That's why the pig runs, I'm sorry, that's why the police runs up on us and says, he didn't do what I told him to do. So I shot him. You should have just obeyed my commands. I'm a grown man. What are we talking about? Obey your commands. No, that's not what we do in here. But that's how most of us get shot, killed, thrown in jail, so on. You know, uh, because of this attitude. But so look, let me I'll, I'll, um, cut that off. Um, I, I, I want to make sure I stay on 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 my three o'clock, um, on, on my three hour. Uh, we got a lot of work to do today. We got another show tonight. Uh, going back to the same venue tonight. Rip them in a second show. Two shows uh, back to back. Um, 78. It would be different if hip hop came into existence as a response to hatred, as an example. Then it would be within our divine and natural rights to express and practice love first amongst ourselves and then toward our neighbors, neighbors, if we are to grow and further develop. Love would be the correct strategy toward our liberation and collective peace. Like if hate, if hate is what we was up against, then love would be the proper strategy. But this is not the case for hip hop. Yes, our God is love. And yes, hip hopers cannot exist without love. But even love is not the correct strategy for our political and social and social liberation, political liberation and social liberation. Justice is. The hip hop scenario by Alonzo Westbrook defines hip hop as, quote, the artistic response to oppression, end quote. With this accurate definition of hip hop as a response to oppression, which is basically an injustice to us, we see that the purpose of hip hop is justice. The purpose of hip hop is justice. Hip hop is social justice. The idea of trying to shut people up, the justice is emceeing. The idea of trying to get a person to conform to your movement, the justice is breaking. The idea of you trying to force Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and Picasso on me and calling that fine art, that ugly art, calling that fine art, my answer is graffiti. That's the justice for this. If we was living in hate, the justice would be love. If we was living in ignorance, the justice would be knowledge. Here we are living without justice. We're living with lawlessness and criminality from day one. So the, the justice of criminality and lawlessness is law, order, and justice. That is the justice. Hip hop comes as that order. Hip hop is the social order. Hip hop is the justice. The purpose of hip hop is not the accumulation of money and other material goods. The real purpose of hip hop is justice. 
And those who are rich because of hip hop are made as such for the purpose of seeking and maintaining justice. We are a rich culture because the ancestors and parents of our citizenry have had everything taken away from them through war and invasion. This is the justice of the universe. If our people have been, everything's been taken from these people and robbed and stolen, it would be justice that their children would become a billion dollar culture. Now, of course, dudes coming in to take that money and, or, and destroy the culture, exploit the culture, that's another story. But the justice is that our parents' prayers were answered. Dr. Martin Luther King said, after civil rights, we got to go, and voting rights, we have to now go to economic rights. We need an economic plan for Black people. We're still being shut out of that, too. And Dr. King knew it. That was his last, his last thing. He said, we got to go get this money now. Then he was assassinated. The very next culture after him, after Stokely, after the Black Panther Party, after the 60s civil rights, the very next culture is hip hop. The very next movement is hip hop. The very next movement, not one happened in between, 50 years went by, then hip hop came. No, the very next movement after the 60s civil rights movement was hip hop. Period. And, and. Hold on. Uh, no highlight on 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 what eighty. No. Okay. No, if you'd like to highlight it, go <laughs> right ahead. And 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 you know why I pause because because um there was a. Uh, Whenever I say the purpose of something is something, we, oh, here it is. Oh, it's 80. Right, it is 80. Uh, but no, I, I was looking at it because when I say the real pur the purpose of hip hop is, is, is not the accumulation of the pur We do usually highlight purpose, meaning. That's why I, was, I paused for a minute. Um, but not this. Um, if you want to, for your own thing, it's not going to be on the test. No, no. Uh, it's not going to be on the test, um, but it, but it's a, it's, a, it's a it's a good observation on your part because that's what we have been highlighting is when we explain things like this means this or this is the purpose for this or so on. We have highlighted that, but no, we 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 don't need to do that here. Um, okay. do, do it personally. Coming up toward the end, eighty one, our richness today. Uh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. wait. Right, through Warren and well, let me read the last part of 80. We are rich because this also points to look at universal law, okay, which, which we're coming up to. Our richness today is simply the, I'm sorry, we are rich, we are a rich culture because the ancestors and parents of our citizenry have had everything taken away from them through war and invasion. This includes white people, Asians, Latinos, Black, all of us. If you part of hip hop, chances are your parents were ripped off and some portion of, of their lives, they were supposed to get something and didn't get it. They, they, they were supposed to, and I mean, even, even it doesn't mean if you're rich, black, rich, white, rich, Latino, that, that you're still not being oppressed, that the injustice is still not upon you, that your parents, even with wealth, were supposed to be more wealthy, or that they were supposed to get something that injustice prevented them from getting. Even if it's just hip hop itself, like your parents wanted to join with the black culture and form a new civilization, but they were denied by the racist part of white culture, let's just say, or Latino culture or Asian culture, which would not allow them to be part of this. And, and so now the justice is that you are now part of this culture because your parents could not be. The universe works like that, and you should pay attention to that. Ask your parents more questions. Ask your grandparents more questions. The justice of the universe is, is exact, and it's always occurring. You got to learn how to read it. 
uh, that was 80, 81. Our richness today is simply the justice or balance, even karma, of our previously imposed unjust state of poverty. Riches and wealth are part of our natural condition. And so hip hop acts as justice itself in the restoring of our natural condition. We are rich not for the purposes of spending money on our oppressor's products. We are rich because such is our natural condition, such belongs to our natural order. We supposed to be rich. The point therefore is to be yourself and stop exploiting yourself. The point it is then to stop using yourself for money and start being yourself with money. Use money to further express yourself as opposed to expressing yourself for money. It is time that we hip hoppers, time that we hip hoppers begin the process of ordering ourselves to our values and principles based uh, uh, principles based firmly in the nature of our being which is justice let me hit you with it again it is time that we hip hoppers begin the process of ordering ourselves ordering ourselves to our values and principles based firmly in the nature of our being which is justice that is the ju your being is the justice things that go against your being are unjust things that match your being are just if you are hip-hop that which goes against hip-hop goes against your being that's what makes it unjust that which supports hip-hop supports your being that's what makes it just it is now time for us hip-hopers to become orderly meaning purposeful, methodically arranged, obedient to our own principles, well-behaved, trustworthy, and lawful. Such a repeated behavior creates peace and stability within our own communities, thus uplifting, thus lifting us above those oppressive governments that cannot seem to achieve such stability for themselves. That we will highlight, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Highlight 83. This is why it is not, it, it is now, it is now time for us hip hopers to become orderly, meaning. What does it mean to be orderly? That's why we're highlighting. What does this mean? Law and order. What does order mean? What does it mean to be orderly? It means purposeful. I'm on purpose. I'm not doing other, I'm not hanging out. I'm standing here because I'm on purpose. I'm standing here on purpose. I'm here for a reason. What does it mean to be orderly? Purposeful. You are purposeful. I am hip to my hop. I know why I am moving. Purposeful. Methodically arranged. This is here because it's supposed to be here. This is here because it's one. This is here because it's two. This is here because it's three. This happened first, so this is gonna happen next. Or historically, this happened first, then this happened, then this happened, then I happened. Methodically arranged. That's what it means to be ordered or, 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 or orderly. Methodic, it, the method. Your, your arrangement is, is based on method, not your feeling. Obedient to our own principles. This is what it means to be orderly, that you are obedient to your own principles first. What makes hip hop hip hop? You are obedient to that first. Well behaved. You'd be surprised being well behaved is everything in a society. Those whose behavior is crazy disrupts everything in the society. You'll notice one of our members uh, during the uh, during Hip Hop Appreciation Week was not well behaved and could not attend some of our most important meetings because they were not well behaved. 
they were in situations where they're yelling out and banging on stuff that dude we're trying to we're trying to behave ourselves we're trying to control our behavior well behaved i got control of myself i i i, I i'm not the, that guy <laughs> or that person i'm not that i'm not out of order I'm well behaved. I have control of myself. Trustworthy. I can be trusted. That's what it means to be orderly. What does it mean to be orderly? I can be trusted. How can you be trusted? Because I follow the law or the laws of our culture. You've seen me following the laws. I'm following the laws now. When I leave here, I'm going to follow the laws. I can be trusted. And lawful, which is what I just said. Lawful. Lawful. To be orderly is to be lawful. When you are lawful, you are automatically ordered. You're automatically orderly. When, when you are lawful, you are in order. Such a repeated behavior. All of what I just said. Okay, purposeful, methodically arranged, obedient to our own principles, well-behaved, trustworthy, and lawful. Such a repeated behavior. I didn't say behaviors. Such a repeated behavior, all of it, creates peace and stability within our own communities, thus lifting us above those oppressive governments that cannot seem to achieve such stability for themselves. Any culture... Any people that can achieve this will rise above anyone who can. And right now, the governments of the United States and the world cannot achieve what I just read to you. They cannot achieve it. So if we achieve it, we are above them. We will inherit the power to govern them and oppression's over. The oppression's over. Because we are the moral authority, the ethical authority, the authority the legal authority, the spiritual authority. No, you could always wave a gun. You could always shoot me, kill me. You could always burn me, lynch me. You could starve me, throw me in jail, but you're not the government. You're not the true king. You could say whatever you like, whatever, but you're not the true king. And that's the point. You got to really be the king to sit on the throne. You got to really be the Kandake queen mother to sit on the throne. What we got is fake kings and bitches and hoes sitting on thrones. That's why the government is the way it is. You got straight bitches and hoes on the throne. The real queen Kandake is pushed off the throne. By these fake bitches on the throne. Talking about we government. We senators. We 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 governors. We senators. We mayors. We council people. You ain't shit. You ain't nothing. You don't even supposed to be there. Your character is wrong for the seat. You're supposed to be a public servant. We supposed to see you sweep in the streets. We're supposed to look to you as the model of all of us. We're supposed to look to you as the trust of our society. You are the trust. I may not be the trust. I'm a citizen. But you have sworn an oath to the Constitution, to the laws of our land. You swore an oath. That swearing of the oath is what brings the trust. You swore the oath, and now you're in the seat, and you break in the law. We catching you breaking the law. We catching you lying. Now I don't trust my own government. I don't trust the law. Now I don't follow the law because I don't trust it. Now I don't follow the law because I don't trust it, But and because you're lawless. So now you're lawless. Lawmakers are lawless. They're not following the laws. They're supposed to follow the make. The society is watching this and saying, we don't need to follow the laws either. 
So the cop then, who's in the middle of this too, by the way, okay, poor police, <laughs> they in the middle of this. That's why they stormed the Capitol because they know who the real enemy is, okay? They know the police know. They stormed the Capitol. They said, that's where the enemy is. <laughs> They're in there. Not, not Bush, um, Trump tried to do the election. And that's bullshit. That's somebody else's view, okay? You get on the ground level and start asking those people from January 6th, why did you storm the Capitol? Why did you storm the Capitol? Get past the Trump shit real quick, because the mad people was with Trump. They ain't stormed the Capitol. Why are you here? Ex-Marine, ex-cop, cop, senator. All of them were there. Ex-Air Force. I think it was the, the woman that got her head blown off was from the Air Force. Climbing through, like, these are military people. Why are they storming the Capitol? What do they know that we don't know? Don't just keep watching the TV. Learn both sides of the story. Learn both sides. Learn to understand. With all thy getting, get understanding. It's the Bible. Get understanding. Why did they storm the Capitol? Why did they storm the White Why didn't they go to the White House? Why didn't they go to the Treasury Department? Why, why, why didn't they go to... Well, they say because the votes were being counted there, and this is how they did it, did it there, and they went to disrupt the counting of the votes. Trump is the real president. They went to discount the votes. Okay. You might have a truth there. That's what it was going down. That's what it was going down. But before all of this went down, the rhetoric was, we're losing our country. We're losing our country, our white Anglo-Saxon Protestant country. We are losing it, y'all. And the only way to get this country back is the way we got it at the beginning. In other words, we're getting too soft. That's what they saying to themselves. And I heard the rhetoric. I'm not here pointing up here. I listen and I try to hear all sides of the story. Dudes, it's like, yo, our colonial way of living is over. We're, that means we're over, okay? We're over, okay? We're not going with this gay stuff. We're not going with this black power movement. We're not going with these Jews. We're not going with none of this. And it seems like these people get more powerful than we are. So how did we get the country to begin with? We killed them all. You better hear what I'm saying. How did we get the country to begin with? We stormed the Capitol and took the government. That's what the book, The Wilmington Lie, is all about. Uh, the William, Wilmington Lie, how they, how there's a whole black government. We hear it all the time. They, they got Tulsa. Everybody just talks about Tulsa, how there was a black Wall Street and a black governance, and white folk came in, blew the place up, killed everybody, and it was never the same since. Well, there's a hundred stories like this. Tulsa's just one. Hey, Ty, another place, just another. And there's others. The whole white mob, we just don't hear about it. Come and kill everybody. Burn your shit down. You got to run for your life. Leave all your belongings. They come in your house. Take your stuff. Take your valuable stuff. Take all your stuff. You have to leave your store with goods in the store. They take all your goods, then burn down the store. After they loot it, they loot it, then burn down the store. This is what they did. This is what white folk in America, the ones who are up here now calling themselves governors and senators, their families did this. This is history. Okay, they did this. So I'm just saying, they don't have the right to rule. They don't have the right. They don't have the right. They don't have the moral right, the ethical right, the legal right, the financial right. No right. Every one of these institutions have failed. And they're being propped up by violence. Th that's it. Look at education. It's being propped up by violence. Violence in the school and violence against teachers. And then the board, the board of the board of education or the, the school board, violence, their policies, violent against kids. Take a look at justice. The only way you keep injustice alive is through violence. 
Look at everything. Look at banking. Nothing works. Nothing works. The only thing that works is when it fails, I'll kill you. So let's just prop it back up. That, that's what we're doing. No one's really going to what is right and saying, this is right. Let's just do what's right. Ain't nobody saying that. Even these people, it, 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 you know, looking at January 6th, the hearing and all of that, they all criminals, all of them. All of us, it's one criminal looking at another criminal and you expect to get justice. And I'm not even pointing fingers. I'm not even saying, you know, I'm not calling nobody name nothing. But the truth has to be spoken. These people have no right to govern. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I, there's nothing to say after that. That's just the truth. <laughs> they have no right to govern. So that's why Trump and his supporters they running up in there. Why? Because you have no right to govern, and I know it. I'm from the inside. I heard you say stupid stuff. Trump said it. He said when he was president, he said, these people are stupid. That's what he said. Actually, when he was running for president, he actually said that. He said, these people running the country, they stupid. He said, they don't know what they're doing. Now, you can, you can look at him and say, no, you stupid. <laughs> Don't know what you're doing. You can say whatever you want. But this is an insider playing the game. He came right out with it. These people are stupid. Look how they're running this and look how they're running that. I would do it this way and that way. I would pull us out of this and put us into this. You may not have agreed with his policy, but he had a policy. And the policy was against these other people here. They all criminals, but it's one criminal saying this criminal's wrong. And what we notice is that when white folks start arguing amongst themselves, that's when black folks start learning. They start telling on each other. Well, it was you that killed the black man down the block. Oh. Now we learn it was you. Oh, okay. Let that go by now. Emmett Till, new case just came out a few days ago. Emmett Till, the famous case. White woman said, he looked at me and said something stupid. Young man, mutilated, face just gone, body mutilated, okay? They went to a court of law, justice, all white jury said, them two dudes that killed the dudes got off. They said they were not, they were not guilty. This is in the court of American law. Okay, you see the young boy killed, lynched, burned, shot, dead. They knew these guys did it, went to the court, and they got off. Years later, they said in the magazine, we did do it. They admitted it. Years later, guess who was never prosecuted? The woman who made the accusation. The very woman who said, he looked at me. That woman was never prosecuted. New evidence came out with, that said that the sheriff's department or the police at the, the police actually at the time had a warrant for her. they went they, they they a warrant for her arrest was issued, but it was never served. They printed it. That's how they got the evidence. They printed it, had it there, but it was never served. Years later now, they want to put this woman, this old woman now, in jail. Or something needs to happen. The family of Emmett Till is saying, no, she didn't. And we can see the corruption of the police department because, again, they issued a warrant for her arrest and never, and never acted on it. They went through a whole court trial. Never saw the, the, the her arrest warrant? Never? No, it's called corruption. And if the courts cannot administer justice, it's not about my opinion. It's a fact. The courts do not have the authority to govern law, to administer law. To ad They don't. It's not my opinion. <laughs> do you understand this? This is not what I think. This is an observation. If, if a court 
cannot administer justice. It is not a court. So what are black folk in America dealing with, really? And by extension, what is hip hop dealing with, really? When we go to what we call a court, and it's not really the court, it's just an opinion against you or for you. There's no real law, there's no real order because the whole society's criminal. No one's following any laws. So the person judging you is judging you based on what, what they feel about you. No one's following the ordinances. No one's following the codes of nothing. And that's sad because America has laws. America is a land of laws, but no one's following them. And why? Because even though America is a land of laws and a land of law and order, a land of principles, the people that are governing that concept are unprincipled, lawless criminals themselves. What is hip hop gonna do? Go down with them? When America falls, we're going to fall with it. What's going to happen when the Civil War breaks out in the United States and we got to choose sides? What, what happens? We're going to sit here and wait for this? We're going to sit here and wait for this to happen, knowing that it's inevitable, too, by the way. It's inevitable. America's going down. It is not going up. We don't have no prospect of a brighter America, a bright future. There's none of that. You're, you're fantasizing if you think we have a bright future here in this country. You're fantasizing. And this is not fantasy. We're talking truth here today. So, so let me stop here. Let me stop here uh, because this is going to go into our own authority. I want to stop here. I'm going to stop at 84. I'm going to stop at paragraph 84 because I want you to understand this, this lesson, this first lesson that we started off with Plato and the social contract theory is what this, that whole thing is, is partially called, the social contract theory. How do, how do societies come together? I wanted to read just this passage and talk about this for this time with you because this is a very important revelation to understand. If we're not going to follow our own laws, then what you're experiencing right now is what it is. The minute we follow our own laws, 70% of what we're experiencing disappears, disappears. It cannot exist. If we are not robbing each other, if we are not lying to one another, if we're not looking to murder one another, if we're not looking to, um, uh, how would I say, put each other down, slander each other. And, you know, if, if there's no brother and sisterhood amongst us, if there's no community amongst us, then we don't have a community. And that means that somebody else who does have a community has the moral right. They, they are the authority. They are the superior because they rose to a superior state of human existence. The individual human is not the highest level of human existence. Even a baby needs a mother and a mother needs a father. You know, we're all interdependent on each other. So it's like, so, you know, if, if you're not going to live as if your brother's life depended on you following law and your sister's following law because they know your life is dependent on them following law. And we all follow the law together. We all follow our ordinances together. There is no part of our law that we don't understand or don't agree with. There's no part of it. We want health, love, awareness, and wealth. That's it. We, is anybody going against that? You're just not part of our society. Uh, go, 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 to a, go to another society. This thing keeps saying low battery. I don't know why it keeps doing that, because it's plugged up. Maybe that, that you know what it is? That wire is faulty. Uh, uh, probably a faulty wire. Well, well, it, it don't matter, because I'm, I'm coming to an end. Actually, Sun One may have to, um, 
I may have to switch over to 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 to, to him because. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I, I'm coming to my close here. Um, if we're not willing to follow our own ordinances and our own rules of conduct, health, love, awareness, and wealth, um, we want health. We want to be healthy. We want love. We don't want hate. We want awareness. We, we don't want ignorance. We want wealth. We want to live well. We want to live rich, which is different from wealth. But we want riches. We want to live well, though. Now, what society is against that? What, what society is against that? What society can be against that? Okay, so health, love, awareness, and wealth. What society are you dealing with? Sickness, hatred, ignorance, and poverty. That's, that's your society? Well, that's what we're living. That's what we get. What's happening? Everybody's sick? I'm talking about hip hop. Major recording artist dying. Sickness. What well, what do we live in? We live in sickness, hatred for each other. One hip hopper hating another. What? Sickness, hatred, ignorance, ignorant of your culture, ignorant of your ancestry, ignorant of hip hop. Ah oh, man. Somebody say, yo, KRS is teaching at the Temple of Hip Hop. You can go online. It's free. Just go on and just, yo. Ah, man, I ain't, I ain't messing with that. Then what are you messing with? What, what, what? Because I'm speaking universal truth. You Same thing I'm saying, everybody's saying. So where you going? I'm just saying it in my way. I'm saying it in a hip hop way. But really? What I'm saying right now to you is really the thoughts of everyone. Every thinking person right now is looking at the United States and saying, what the fuck is going on? Really? And nobody knows what to do because we're not in those positions of power. We're not in legislative offices. We're not senators, governors. We're not that. We give that authority over to others that we think are supposed to have our best interests in mind. And now we've learned over the last 20 years, they don't. They don't. Now, either you sit there like a little kid and keep watching corruption after corruption after corruption after corruption, or you join in on what I'm talking about right now. And you save yourself by following your own ordinances, following your own rules, and save yourself. That's my read today. That's my message today. And it's gonna be the message next week as well as we go further into this. We're gonna talk next week about authority, where it comes from. Where, where does real authority come from? Not authority with a gun, uh, but, uh, but real authority, the rightful rulers of the earth, the rightful rulers of society, the rightful ruler of the culture. And when we say ruler, meaning the rule, the ruler is not someone who tells you what to do. The ruler is doing what you're supposed to do. Big difference, big difference. Slick Rick, the ruler, he's not telling you to do something. The ruler is, I am already ruling with what I'm doing. I am the ruler if I'm giving you the bread. I am the ruler if, I am, if my rhyme skills are dazzling you right now. I am the ruler of rhyme skill. Not of you. Why would I want to rule you? That's for your mother and your father. They are the only rulers really of you is your mother and father. And even that can be questioned. But that's the only rulers of you. It's those who created you, your mother and your father. That's, those are your rulers. A government, somebody outside your house, that's a ruler? No. 
That's a capitalist and a, and, and, a, and a thief and a traitor to your existence. Get away from them people quick. Don't follow their laws. They lead to nothing. And I'm not talking about United States laws. I'm talking about these other little laws that they eat off United States laws. Well, the U.S. says this, so they come down here with some old twisty. You don't need to follow them laws. Know what the Constitution says. Know what the, the Declaration of Independence says. Know what the Gettysburg Address says. Know what uh, George Washington's farewell uh, address says. Know what, um, uh, what is this guy, Truman, um, Harry Truman, President Harry uh, S. Truman, know, know, know what he said about uh, the prison industrial complex. I think it was his farewell address as well. I think it was. Uh, what he said about the prison industrial complex and all of this stuff. These are the speeches you really need to study and, and study them because it's when the president's leaving that he drops the bomb on you and says, it was like this. Ah, no. And, and they don't, they don't, they don't teach that stuff in school. Cause they don't tell you. So, I mean, they do, they, well, they teach it in some schools. Uh, but when I was growing up, I never heard of no Gettysburg address. I never heard of George Washington's last state of the union and all that. I never heard of none of that. We just heard this dude chopped down a cherry. George Washington is the greatest man ever. He chopped down the cherry tree, never told a lie. And he's the one that started America. He on your dollar. So you better respect our ancestors. That's what I was told growing up. And then 200, two centuries later, this other white man named Abraham Lincoln freed us. Uh, you didn't fight for your own freedom. You wasn't fighting for freedom from George Washington forward. No, you was a slave with nothing to say, think, do nothing. You was a mindless human. No, you wasn't even a human. You was just a mindless animal until until Abraham Lincoln freed you. And because he freed you, you now are free. That's why we have to question Juneteenth as well. Because even though we understand what Juneteenth is about, we also understand that no man can free you. <laughs> No, no human can free you. Freedom is something you feel inside. You free you. And that's what African-Americans did. Abraham Lincoln never freed African-Americans. For those of you outside the country and heard that stupid, dumb shit that, uh, that Abraham Lincoln, through something called the Emancipation Procrastination, freed African-Americans. That's a straight bullshit lie. That's propaganda. Here's the truth. African-Americans freed themselves. We killed these white folk. Okay, let's start there. Read the, the, the mess, read um, Martin R. Delaney who fought in the Civil War. Read about um, uh, Harriet Tubman as a general in the, Civil, in, in the uh, Civil War. There's not much written on her as a general at, in the, think about this, okay? All we get is Harriet Tubman as, um, you know, some kind of, uh, uh, okay, Harriet Tubman as an abolitionist of black people. They never say that she freed white people too. But an abolitionist of black people trying to get free. That's what we get from for Harriet Tubman. Very seldom, and they'll show you the images because they can't deny it. Like you go see the movie Harriet, They'll show you her in military uniform leading the army, but that wasn't what the movie was about. The movie was her as a docile slave running from Massa, trying to save her people, and da 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 da. Bullshit. This woman was a military genius. They didn't understand. First of all, how she got past all of them is military knowledge. How she gets past all these people to free her people and did over 300 trips. That's military genius. They don't discuss her like that. No, keep you over here with the slave. But Harriet Tubman, not only that, she didn't join the Union Army as a private, as a major captain, some old wild shit. I, no, she came in as general. See, look, how do you, how do you go from abolitionist to ge general? <laughs> I am the general of this army right now, okay? And they gave her a bunch of people. The Union Army gave her about two, 300 men. 
under her command to go free others. This is the story that needs to be told. Nobody freed black people. We shot and was shot for that freedom. And we fought and we won the war. It's in every general's diary that the war could not have been won without the black soldiers of the Union Army fighting for their freedom. That's how the war was won. You can't, if anytime you say Abraham Lincoln freed slaves, you are denying all the military soldiers that fought for freedom, fought for it, okay? Killed for it. It don't matter whether you write up a document. I was on the battlefield and killed that white man right over there who said I was a nigger and with an ER, nigger, and wanted me on the ground picking cotton. I blew his fucking brains out. Don't tell me you wrote some shit and said I was free. Nah, I burnt that whole fucking plantation down, me and my crew. That's how we got free. Nat Turner, that's how we got free. So don't let these people tell you some bullshit about Abraham Lincoln freed us. That's bullshit all the way down the road. It's bullshit. He did not free anybody. Never, ever, ever. White America could not contain black America. That was the problem. They could not contain us. And they still can't contain us internationally. Because if they lock all of us up, Said like they did with slavery. You're trying to lock us all up. Basically, it's prison for all African Americans who's gonna live in prison. Even if you try to do that, France gonna have a problem with you. Russia gonna have a problem with you. The UN, China, these people are more powerful than America now. They're gonna have a problem. You think these people are your enemies? Don't get caught up in the TV. Now, these are criminals too. Don't sleep on China or Russia. These are straight criminals. Okay, this is nothing to say. But when you are African American in particular, and I'm gonna get back to hip hop in a minute, when you are African American in particular, this is the greatest learning experience for you as a scholar. This is your learning, and you can't get this in a book. You gotta look, look, and listen. Shut your mouth and open your ears and your eyes and your mind and say, yo. What Putin did, what President Putin did to Ukraine, that's exactly what George Washington did to the Native Americans. Wow. That's the same way they ran up in Africa. So I could see in real time how it goes down. And if you remember early on, early on, when, when, when Russia was first coming up, posted up on the border, right there, when it was, Early on, when it was first, first, first getting ready to go down, they was like, Russia said, no, we're not going to invade. We're doing military exercises, straight line. What do you think they're doing now? You think if a comet was going to hit this planet and destroy it, they would tell you? Like, wake up. You, you may wake up one day and a comet, uh, an asteroid is, hitting, is gonna hit this planet. It happened before. Why, why can't it happen again? Why has no asteroids have hit, ever hit this planet ever again? <laughs> they got all kind of craters and all types of shit hitting this planet, okay? Or hitting other planets. Why the Earth never got a crater? Well, it did actually, but don't you think we're due for one? You think if a major crater is going to, a major media or some object from space is coming to hit the earth, and they said, based on calculations, it's going to hit California, and California is going to be wiped out, and that's going to cause coastal flooding across the entire United States and other parts of the world. You think they would tell you? Don't think you're going to get an alert. Something that that magnitude, they're gonna let you die, straight if you live in Cali, uh, or oh, wherever, Arizona, you know, uh, New Mexico. No, no, 
They're not because what what can you do? Well, what can you do? It, it, even if they say all of California, everybody, Cali, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, you all have to leave and move to the East Coast because there's a media that's going to hit the Pacific Ocean and everything over there is ghosts. What would this country do? What would it do? What, what would be the country then? How would people act? When America invaded Syria under Barack Obama, killed Gaddafi, uh, Libya, invaded Libya as well, killed Omar Gaddafi, President Omar Gaddafi, after he gave up his weapons of mass destruction, did everything they told him to do to get off the terrorist list, he did everything they wanted him to do. And when he was vulnerable, they went in and killed him and took his country, Libya. Then the people of Libya, are dispersed all over. They're running for their lives. The same thing Russia is doing now, America did in Libya. In Libya, it just wasn't on CNN. CNN chose not to say anything. So did Fox News, so did MSNBC, so did the BBC, so did everybody. That they show you all day. Oh, Russia's in Ukraine. Russia's in Ukraine. But when America was in Syria, and America was in, really Libya, is what I really should point out. When America was in Libya, you didn't get all this. When black Africans from Libya were being shot up, lined up and shot by American troops, blowing these people's homes up, blowing their malls up, their, their supermarkets, their, this was, just look outside your door. The same way your neighborhood looked is the same way Libyans' neighborhood looked. And some foreign power came over there and blew these people to smith the rings. You can't even, you think, you think any of these school shootings is something? They just don't show you the pictures of what they got American soldiers doing in these other countries. That's why. There was 22 suicides a day for American soldiers coming back from whatever they went through in Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. Whatever they were doing over there, they came back over here and said, I can't even live on this earth no more. Boom, I'm out. 22 soldiers a day. A day. Do you realize the epidemic that that is? A day? A 22? That's thousands of people killing themselves because of what they went through overseas. Nobody's talking about this. Nothing. Nothing. And it forms a, a, a fantasy in your mind that everything's cool. And you good? Just go down to the supermarket and go get your orange juice. And that's what it is. That's a fantasy. Hip-hop cannot live like this. And that's why I say black folk, you live any way you want to live. Okay. I'm African American. Okay. It is what it is. I don't question the leadership. I don't even have had no leadership, but you know, those who stand up and claim leadership of African Americans, I do support them and say, look, you do what you can, you do what you got to do. But I've studied my people. <clears throat> okay. I'm a black study scholar myself. Okay. Wrote two books on this issue. It is what it is. And I come to the conclusion here that African Americans, we got our own issue. We're wanting to be so close to these white folk. Like that's our issue, okay? We got to deal with that. We want to be Americans. We want to be this and we want to, okay, deal with that, okay? But I am hip hop. Let me be clear with that. Like the same way we all black, but some of us are Jamaican. Some of us are Haitian. Some of us look black, but we're actually Nigerian. Or we look African-American, but we are Nigerian. We're Ghanaian. We're from South Africa. We're from Morocco. You know, just because you look black doesn't mean you have to be this from this particular culture. We're all black people, and we should all unite. I say often, when black people unite, God returns to the earth. But 
it, 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 but 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 the, the situation here is is that as hip hop though as hip hop we have a shot at achieving something that african americans couldn't achieve white folk couldn't achieve asians can't achieve nobody seems to be able to achieve the type of society that i'm discussing with you today nobody seems to be able to achieve it and the reason being is because they're not the rightful rulers of the earth and i'm not again pointing fingers i'm not belittling anybody i'm not putting anybody down but if you are the head of a nation and your nation is out of order lawless the people are hungry they're aggravated crime everywhere then isn't it safe to say that you're not the proper leadership you, you, that you lack the, the ability to govern the situation? Isn't it, is, isn't that what we're talking? No, but people don't want to look at that. We are gonna keep voting for the same people who clearly have no control of America. They have no control. They act like they kind of, like the president, with all due respect, President Joe Biden, he has no control. Then what is the presidency then? What is it? It has no power, no control, Everybody doing whatever they want. Hip hop can't be like this. Hip hop has to be that nation of laws because that's the strategy. That's the, that's the revolutionary strategy that if we follow law, we will write, we don't need an army. We don't need a Navy. We don't need an air force. We don't need a church, even a temple. We don't need nothing. All we need to do is follow our own laws. We will rise above probably every nation on earth because there's no nation following their own laws. There's no religion on this earth that is accurate to its own book, that is, that, that is consistent with its own book. You read any of the major religions, you read their book and then go look at them. You'll be like, what, what are y'all reading? What, I, I don't see nothing in this book that you're doing as a major religion. No, nah, we in the end times, y'all. We in the end times. And in the end times, you begin to see the truth. And immaturity is when you can't respond to it. You know it's the truth, but you're too immature to respond to it. So you see the truth and just say, well, I, I, I. you just get to a yeah, da, da, da. You know, we should come up with a new word called da, da, da. <laughs> like, because it you just not you just don't do it. you say look the truth is right in front of you George Floyd George Floyd you a black cop George Floyd Eric Gardner Trayvon Martin Rodney King you a black cop right in front of your face this is the injustice right here you see that it's the institution that is corrupt, not one or two cops. The concept of police is corrupt. You a black cop, you know that. You know they after your people, you hear them. You, you hear them in the precinct. That probably was my warning. You hear them in the precinct. But you still a cop though. That's that da 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 That's what that is. That, that's what that is. Dab, 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 dab. I don't even know how to spell that. Dab, dab. <laughs> Figure that spelling out. Okay, dab, dab. And look at my tongue. Dab. It's like dab, dab, dab. <laughs> like that's, this, that's what it sounds. That's what it comes to. That, that, that's what it all comes down to. Dude stormed the Capitol. That, was a, that is a crime. They, and now it's coming out that it was a planned coup. These are crimes anywhere you go in the world. These are crimes. Why are these people not in jail? Dun, 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 dun. J Trump committed a crime, right? Why are you not in jail? Dun, 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 dun. That's all you got to say. That's it. See, this is the stupidity that we have to outthink. This is why I talk about intelligence, being able to understand, have a broad understanding. Don't get caught in your view. And you can have your view. 
You can say, this is what I think. But if you don't understand what's going on on the other side, you can't really think. You can't even really have a view. You're just going along with your emotions or just backing up whatever it is you think you want to hear. And that's not what we're about. That's not scholarship. That's not what a hip hop scholar is about. So take all of this in. As I come up now on the fourth hour, take all of this in, what we're talking about. We're talking about community, the building of community, and a crimeless society. What does it take to build a crimeless society? It takes us first, establishing our own laws and following them, and then respecting the laws of others. I am KRS-One. This has been our read this week. We get together like this every Sunday, about 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the United States, and we discuss our culture. Nothing like this is happening anywhere in the world. So I thank you for being part of this. You are a special person if you're part of this call right now. And I'm not just gassing you or telling you some, something crazy just for you to think you great. No, no, no. Truth is being spoken right now. And if you decide to shirk the truth off, then it's on you. If you decide to embrace this truth, and emotionally embrace the truth, then life changes for you. Like it changed for me. When I first heard of hip hop, others weren't taking hip hop seriously. I took it seriously. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm KRS-One. I'm getting ready to go do a show right now. I'm getting G's, okay? I'm going to get my money right now, okay? No front. I know dudes talking, yeah, we got G's, we got money. Okay, we, okay? I'm just saying, okay? Everything I'm teaching you, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Everything I'm saying to you, every book, every piece of literature that I'm bringing to you, I have experienced it or I'm experiencing it. The only thing I haven't experienced yet that I talk to you about is our hip hop city. And I will experience that in a few minutes. But that's about it our visions and our goals of what we have in experience and whatever I'm teaching here to you today, if it's vision and goal, then we haven't experienced it. And that's only really 10 to 5% of what I teach is vision and goal. The other 95%, 90% of what you're learning here is what I am experiencing my own self and can tell you this, is, this was wrong. This was wrong. And I can show you why it was wrong. This is right. And I can show you why this is right. That's the purpose of your teacher. That's the purpose of knowledge reigns supreme over nearly everyone. That is the purpose for this dude on your screen right now. To be the teacher for hip hop. To be your teacher that brings ideas to you and helps your mind to expand a little more. Someplace else you can go to beside the internet and just TV or whoever somebody, you know, not the internet, but um, these, these show, you know, these little blogs and stuff where people are really talking and have no clue what they're talking about. And that's the problem with democracy in and of itself. Stupid people get to talk with the wise. Uh, and that's Socrates said that. Uh, but but that that's, that's the problem. So for you to be here, it means you're seeking wisdom. You're seeking out. You're digging past all the bullshit. And you're trying to get to an honest voice. You're trying to get to a trustworthy voice. You're trying to get to an authoritative voice, an authentic voice, so you can hear what's really going on. Well, you've arrived at that place right now. I'm a true hip hopper, certified. I got my certification. I'm a true hip hopper, certified, okay? I'm teaching. What I'm teaching you here now is known all over the world. I'm just teaching it in the hip hop way, uh, in that sense. And that's what I want you to get out of this. I want you to be a more loving, intelligent and strong, confident being. That's what I want. That's what my, my intent is. That's why we're teaching what we are teaching. I'm KRS-One. I'm out of here. I got to go to a concert, rock these people, teach, grab my money, come back, eat that salmon, chill. And uh, that's what I'm doing. Uh, uh, with my uh, 4th of July weekend. As you can see, we're working on the 4th of July, so we don't have time to celebrate it. Uh, and I'm kind of grateful for that. Um, uh, Sun One, maybe you want to talk a little bit about, as, as we go out, because, I, I, again, I could go on, but um, about the 4th of July, I didn't say nothing about the 4th <laughs> of July whatsoever, which is kind of whack. 
uh, we usually talk about the holidays um, that happen within our uh, talk, um, within mm -hmm. our call. But uh, like Thanksgiving or thanks taken, uh, but like like those holidays, I know we don't really study them or practice them. I was talking to Curtis Blow the other day, uh, and he was like, you know, well, I, I can get on the phone with you Monday. Um, I, I don't know if, if you celebrate, you know, Fourth of July. And I was like, Curtis, you talking to a frontline revolutionary over here? We all just broke out laughing because he was like, I don't know, you know, you don't even know what to say to people anymore. He said, I think it's bullshit. I don't never celebrate that shit. But he don't even know how to approach another man or woman saying, you know, because people are so caught up. I need my Thanksgiving. Oh, I need my Christmas. Oh, I need my, Jan my July 4th Independence Day. And I'm getting ready to go find my um, my uh, Frederick Douglass. I wanted to sit down with it. You'll put me back on. Maybe I'll read a few lines from Frederick Douglass. Uh, okay. What is your 4th of July to us? Um, well, that well, well, first off, the Fourth uh, of July is a lie. Um, they they pick the day uh, because of significance astrologically. Um, it's actually signed, or, or the Declaration of Independence was signed on a different day and really put into law on a different day, mm. uh, July Fourth. Or essentially, to make a long story short. Um, Sirius appears in the sky on July 4th and that light and that energy is really what they co-opted and try to add extra significance to uh, the country becoming independent. Uh, so just, just to not, I mean, I have, I have a whole article. I, I could read some of it. Um, while you look for uh, Brother Douglas. But... Yeah. Um, it's interesting. You may want to say some words on the 4th of July, only because it's the 4th of July here, only in the United States. Right. Um, uh, and also, it's supposed to be when the United States declared its independence at 17, May 1st, seven, no, wait, yeah, May 1st, 1776. Um. I don't know what I'm even talking about, but it, it's, it's somehow we declared independence. And this is whack because I'm not an American history scholar or, or even care to be one in this context. Um, I'm hip hop and I come from a different angle, but we're talking about July 4th. So let me speak about it respectfully in the context of what it is. Uh, and it is America's independence. Um, August, August 2nd. Is what? is the day the Declaration of Independence is officially signed. Officially signed on August 2nd, but we're celebrating some July 4th or July 4th uh, in, in that sense. I will also say this before I, before I go get this, I'm trying to find my other document. I will say this, that notice, I, 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 I was on a television show, I think, I forgot what it was, one of these, daytime talk shows in the 90s and um i, I remember sitting i was sitting there and i remember saying it just came out my mouth because we were talking about gangster rap at the time that was the big topic gangster rap mm -hmm. and i was up there on, on this thing and i had said it just spurred i said the first gangster rap song really is the star spangled banner right and the audience was taken back how dare the Star Spangled Banner. And then I went on to explain. Bombs bursting in air. Mm -hmm. And all of it, you know, old say, can you see? Through the dawn's early light. I remember proudly streaming. Uh, what they're talking about is missiles and bullets and explosions right. and things in the air. And they even had gang signs. Our Rock is right that from our flag was still there. And you actually flying gang signs, shooting the gun, busting. The reason we have fireworks during 4th of July is because those were the bombs and the guns that was going on in black communities and Native American communities. That's what they were doing to us. Right. Why would any black person or Native American have anything to do 
with the 4th of July or doing fireworks, when those fireworks symbolize them blowing up your community, blowing up your nation, blowing your children up. That's what we're celebrating. This is, this is what the fireworks are about. Because imagine these fireworks are not being shot at them. They're shooting these fireworks at Britain. At least that's what the history is. But the real story is Britain went and told Africans, you joined the British army, you free. All these Africans was like, oh, I'm out of here. Thousands of Africans joined the British forces against that colonial nonsense. Right. And, 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 and this is what you're fighting against. This, this is what the bombs bursting in air gave, gave proof. To, and you know what happens when a bomb bursts in air? The fragments of it falls on the people. It's like little bullets and fragments going. It's like a suicide bomber. They, they put little balls, little ball pellets all, all in, the, in their explosion. So when it explodes, these balls are what kill you. Right, shrapnel. Like the fire or the flame or something. It's these little balls that blow out in every direction. And then, of course, the debris from the explosion. It's the debris and the balls and the wood and the this and that that's penetrating your body and killing you. That's what bombs bursting over air actually is doing. It's yeah. killing people. I can't take it. It's the star. <laughs> it's the star spangled banner. Oh, uh, and if you look at it, I just pulled it up. Spangled uh, definition: covered with spangles or other small sparkling objects or lights. And so the banner, which is the United, was the United States flag. But that star is serious <laughs> that they're talking about on this day. Uh, I'll read uh, a little bit from uh, two articles. It says, on this day, this was released on August 2nd, 2021, um, by Scott Bomboy, or Bumboy. Um, on this day, the Declaration of Independence is officially signed. August 2nd, 1776 is one of the most important but least celebrated days in American history when 56 members of the Second Continental Congress started signing the Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia. Officially, the Congress declared its freedom from Great Britain on July Oh. Okay. Right. Um, they began signing it on July 2nd, 1776, when it approved a, a resolution in a unanimous vote. After voting on the independence, after voting on independence on July 2nd, the group needed to draft a document explaining the move to the public. It had been proposed in a draft form by the Committee of Five, John Adams, Roger Sherman, Robert Livingston, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson. And it took two days for the Congress to agree on the edits. Thomas Jefferson was the main author. Once the Congressional, or once the Congress approved the actual Declaration of, of Independence on July 4th, it was sent to a printer named John Dunlap about 200 copies, mind you, only 200 copies existed um, of the Dunlap broadside were printed with John Hancock's name printed at the bottom. Today, 26 copies remain. Then on July 8th, 1776, uh, Colonel John Nixon of Philadelphia read a printed Declaration of Independence to the public for the first time on what is now called Independence Square. So again, as everybody knows, they was doing all this shit in secret, um, making or drawing it up, putting it together. But again, there are several accounts that say, no, July 4th had wasn't it. It wasn't it and with all of these, um, you have to understand the knowledge of the times. Um, 
they they were heavy into uh, occult knowledge and knowledge of the stars, the knowledge that um, was being taken out of Africa um, from Kemet and Kush and all really all of Africa. You could say no. This is this is this was the big thing to be intelligent about in that time. Um, new things have been created now for society, which who knows <laughs> what that really is as far as that's concerned um, as to what your focus should be on. But when people were free, they studied the stars and they studied um, the alignment, nature, and things of that sort. So understand how it actually uh, ties in. But the other article, some serious secrets about the 4th of July. It says, July 4th is Independence Day, the day that the USA celebrates its birthday. It is also around the time that the sun meets with the highly mystical star, Sirius. Could it be any coincidence that America's birthday coincides with this faded day? The brightest star in the heavens, Sirius, every year on July 4th, from our Earth's position, our sun is in conjunction with Sirius, the sacred star of Isis, the goddess of the divine feminine. Esoterically, this star is our spiritual sun and is associated with liberation. According to ancient teachings, the concept of freedom resides in human consciousness because of the influence of this star system, the star system of Sirius. In esoteric philosophy, we are told that Sirius is the source of intelligence that originally came from the star Sirius to give infant humanity the source of divine wisdom, the divine spark of the sacred fire from the halls of the blue flame. It is a star believed to be of a very high frequency and has long been revered by the Mayans and ancient Egyptians. So this that just just to show you, and, and again, you can look this up. Everything um, I was Googling while teacher was talking. You can look it up. You can Google and, and check. <laughs> uh, everything is verifiable that, that we're essentially trying to help everybody gain, bring their awareness to. Um, but let's go back to the teacher. I um, I found my document. Yes, sir. Um, is it? Oh, there we go. Yes, sir. Oh, shoot. Hold on. <laughs> One person. Hold on. Hit me up. Yeah. This is it. What to the slave is the 4th of July, Frederick Dudley right there okay now i got this um uh out of a uh, an african-american museum that was in washington not the national african-american smithsonian there was another one a smaller one um uh there in washington uh before the before the african-american museum and i got this there uh, and I'm just going to read a little bit of it uh, to you. It's the 4th of July, so we're going over a little bit. Um, uh, but this is Frederick Douglass. And this is when, right around the time, you know, I mean, the, 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 um, um, the Declaration of Independence was the 1700s, around that time, 1776, 1700s, this time. They're putting this, they're trying to get this thing together. And... And here you have in this this article is 1852. Okay, so they celebrate, celebrate, celebrate about 100 years later. Uh, they're still celebrating this Declaration of Independence. Now, what makes this document that I'm holding so important is because it clearly shows that Black folk was not with it. It clearly shows that even in the 1800s, Black folk were aware that this is a hypocrisy. This is a straight hypocrisy. How are you claiming any of this? But see, this is what white, this is what black folk have to live with all through our, our whole 400 and some odd years living here. 
in in the United States, this is the reality that we have to deal with. This this reality that it's all about white culture. It's, and that's what we got to as, as, aspire to assimilate to. This is what we're supposed to be about. This is what it is. You know, like you're not even supposed to question what, what be privileged that you're part of our society. And if you don't like it, get out of here. That's the attitude. And so here we're looking at Frederick Douglass. And here's, here's and I, I, you know, look up, if you don't know who Frederick Douglass is, look him up. You know, I'm not going to go through his biography here, but uh, this is one of the great African-American thinkers. And I say African-American thinkers. Uh, you know, he is an African-American. He believes in America. That's why we know of him. And not so much of Martin R. Delaney, who was a back to Africa revolutionary uh, with Garvey and them. <clears throat> oh, later on, Garvey would come and, and Booker T. Washington and so on. This guy, Frederick Douglass, is, is the lineage of Dr. King and W.E.B. Du Bois and, you know, um, even Barack Obama, President Barack Obama to an extent, I, you know. Uh, but th that that's this lineage. And even this lineage, who believes in America, Okay, check out what he's saying. And this is kind of the writing is small. Um, so I'm gonna try to just you know bear with me as I go through this. They try to make it like an original document, you know. So this is what it was supposed to be the original newspaper that it was written on. That's why we're looking at it like this, but it just makes it difficult to read. Um, this is Frederick Douglass on the fourth of July or the fourth of July. This was actually on July 5th. The article came out. He spoke the next day. I guess the article came out the next day. Fellow citizens, pardon me. Allow me to ask, why am I called upon to speak here today? Now, imagine there's a bunch of white folk in the room. They asked Frederick Douglass to speak. What a mistake that was. They asked him to speak on Independence Day. They're enjoying the independence of America. and said, we're going to get Frederick Douglass to speak for us. And I'm quite sure some white folk already knew his views and just wanted to hear them themselves. But there were some white folk in there that was really thinking they're going to get some kind of promise of America coming out this black man's mouth. He said, um, what have I or those I represent to do with your national independence? Are the great principles of political freedom and of national justice embodied in that Declaration of Independence extended to us? And I am therefore called upon to bring our humble offering to the national altar and to confess the benefits and express devout gratitude for the blessings resulting from your independence to us. Would to God both <clears throat> would to God both for your sakes and ours that an affirmative answer could be truthfully returned to those questions. Then would my task be light and my burden easy and delightful. For who is there so cold that a nation's sympathy could not warm him? Who so obliterate and dead to who so obliterate and dead to the claims of gratitude that would not thankfully acknowledge such priceless benefits? He's talking about America and the claim. He's getting ready to crush these people right here. Uh, who so solid and selfish that would not give his voice to, well, actually he's talking about himself, give his voice to swell the hallelujahs of a national jubilee when the chains of servitude has been formed has been formed from his limbs, when the chain of servitude has been formed from his has been when the chains of servitude has been torn from his limbs. I am not that man. In a case like that, the dumb might eloquently speak and the lame man leap at his heart. And just keep in mind, this is his language from back then too. And I'm, I'm not doing such a good job of reading it in the poetic prose that, that Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was an MC. This dude used to speak like, like, like the way we rhyme today. And that's what also got him. And he also was a poet. 
That's what also got him his, his claim, his speaking ability. Let me go down here. Fellow citizens, okay, here we go. Fellow citizens, above your national tumultuous joy, I hear the mournful wails of millions whose chains, heavy and grievous yesterday, are today rendered more intoler intolerable by the jubilee shout that reached them. If I do forget, if I do not faithfully remember those bleeding children of sorrow this day, may my right hand for, forget her cunning and may my tongue cleave to my roof of my mouth. Like he said, if I forget these people who are suffering while y'all jubilating, these people over here said, if I forget them, may my tongue stick to my mouth and my hand you know, not work or something. Um, um, yeah, to forget them, he said, uh, 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 you know, to forget them, to pass lightly over their wrongs and to chime in with the popular theme would be treason, most scandalous and shocking, and would make me a reproach before God and the world to celebrate the 4th of July Frederick Douglass is saying, would, is not only treasonous to my people, but it is a sin before God in the world. Look at this. And I know black folk out there barbecuing right now. <laughs> okay. I'm getting ready to go to a concert. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. We ain't celebrate no 4th of July, I'll tell you that. Um, uh, wait a minute. Let me, let me finish this up real quick. I got to find it because it's so small, these words. And every time I look up, I have to find my place again. Um, before God and the world, okay? My subject then, fellow citizens, is American slavery during the 4th of July. My subject then is American slavery. I shall see this day and its popular characteristics from the slave's point of view standing there, identified with the American bondman, the slaver, making his wrongs mine. I do not hesitate to declare with all my soul that the character and conduct of this nation never looked blacker to me than on this 4th of July. Woo! <laughs> and of course, it's a whole bunch. It's a whole piece. See, I can't go through everything. I can't read this whole thing to you. I'm just giving you the snippets um uh uh look, look at this piece right here go where you may search where you will roam through all the monarchies and despotisms of the old world travel through south america search out every abuse and when you have found the last lay your fat by the side of the everyday practices of this nation. And you will say with me that, th that for revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy, America reigns without rival. This is MC to its best. Let me hit you with it one more game. One more. Go where you may, search where you will, roam through all the monarchies and despotisms, these corrupt governments of the old world, travel through South America, search out every abuse, and when you have found the last one, every abuse, so go every, he said, Search every monarchy, every go to South America, search out every abuse you could find. Okay? And when you have found the last abuse, lay your facts by the side of the everyday practices of this nation. Lay all that by the everyday practices of this nation. And you will say with me, 
that for revolting barbarity, not just barbarity, but revolting barbarity, okay? Uh, that for revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy, like revolting barbarity is like I'm I'm just gonna be so crazy. It's um um uh, uh, January six is revolting barbarity. That that's what that is. The barbarian, and, and you gotta be careful with that word barbarian because that's also being used in, incorrectly, just in in that sense. Because the barbarians are real people, okay, and there's nothing barbaric about them. But in the context of what the MC is talking here, MC D D F is talking here on MCFD, MC Douglas. What he's talking about here, though, is barbarity in the sense of cruelty and and just animal shit. Just you you just not even a human. He's saying for revolt and, and, and by the way, that that level of, of of barbarity and criminality and cruelty and heartlessness. That is what's revolting. He's not saying it's it's revolting to me. Understand revolting barbarity is like saying confident ignorance. It's like you ain't know you ignorant and you talking ignorant, but you confident about it. It's like you sitting there going, the world, um, you know, has um, you, you know, so stupid. I'm trying to think of something stupid to say, like. But you standing on it like yes, and A equals B, and B equals C, and then D, and you wrong, and you're ignorant, and you're arrogant about it. That's the same thing with barbaric behavior or that savage animal behavior. You the savage, you the one acting all stupid and wild, but you gonna actually revolt? Like as if what I'm saying to you is wrong. <laughs> okay, you you standing on Chauvin, you standing on George Floyd's neck. And you're going to act like we wrong for saying get off his neck. <laughs> That's revolting barbarity. Okay, you fighting for it. You, you want to be this guy. Okay, Frederick Douglass is saying, when you search all the crimes of the past, all of them, and he's a well-studied slave, okay? This dude says, study all that stuff from the past, and then go to South America, which had no laws, okay, according to this, these people dealing with. He said, go down there, okay? And also, not that he had no laws, when the Civil uh, when the civil War was won by the Union, the Confederacy, most of the Confederacy ran down to South America to try to start their state down there, and they did. They enslaved mad Africans down there. The brutality was ridiculous, what they did to the people down there in South America. Frederick Douglass is talking about all of that, all of that. He said, go down to South America. He said, look around everywhere. Go down to South America, okay? And he says, search out every abuse. And when you have found the last abuse, lay your facts by the side of, of the everyday practice practices of this nation. And you will say with me that for revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy, shameless, like you have no shame. You're just gonna be a hypocrite. And that's, you're just gonna be like this, yeah. I didn't invade the, the, the White House. Uh, uh, <laughs> shameless hypocrisy, okay? They said America reigns without rival. For, for, for shocking barbar for revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy over the last two, three, four, five, six hundred years of old despotism, what's going on down in South America? You put all that together, the everyday practices that Frederick Douglass was seeing in his lifetime, he says, America reigns without rival. There is no one above America when it comes to brutality and shameless hypocrisy. And that, my friend, is the conclusion of our lesson today. That's the truth. And we're living that today. We're living that today. So Frederick Douglass, big up to you uh, for laying that down for us uh, and having it uh, able to even be remembered and written down and so that we can speak of it today in 2022. What is your 4th of July to us? 
to those who are under the neck of racist police officers getting shot in the back, getting shot in the head, getting shot just for no reason. What is our 4th of July to you? I mean, what is your 4th of July to us? Where's our independence? Where's our freedom? You know, it's interesting, son, one, you just talk, talked about the Cirrus, Cirrus, uh, the star Cirrus, um, and how the stars in the uh, American flag, that's exactly what that um, actually is. And we also try to point out here at the Temple of Hip Hop often how uh, astronomy has a lot to do with not only this nation, but all nations. If, if you're not up on what's going on, if you're not up on the stars, uh, if, you, if you don't have a knowledge of the stars, you don't have a knowledge of how to build nations. Uh, and that's just straight up and down. The stars determine when you can build nations, uh, what happens during the course of these nations. And this is an old science. We look at it now as, as horoscope and astrology. And, you know, we add all types of bullshit to it. But at the end of the day, this is how nations were actually formed. And to know the science, to know how, when to do things and why. You know, today's the 4th of July. Cirrus is in alignment with the sun. And this is supposed to be our spiritual um, sun. Our, spirit, sun. Yep. our spiritual energy uh, is supposed to be coming forward uh, with this. You could take that serious. <laughs> you could take that seriously today, or you could just let it go by as a part of entertainment. Right. I take it seriously. We're getting on stage. Last night I had to, you know, do my thing, uh, teach people, show them what it is. You showed only a small clip. We got down uh, and, and, and really, you know, brought it to them uh, in, in other places, probably online now anyway. Uh, uh, but we, we, we really brought it. And I was proud of us uh, while we were out there yesterday because, because the people also, they gave it up too. They knew what it was. They, 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 it, was like, it was like, yep, let's get this right now. Uh, right. And they sat down and I gave it to them. I just rammed them with it and just said, yo, this is what we got to do. This is what we got to think. This is how we got to be. And they was cheering. So it, it lets me know also that I'm not the only one that thinks like this. I'm not the only one that's looking for a better society. I'm not the only one thinking we can have a crimeless society. I'm not looking to climb through nobody's window. I'm not looking to shoot somebody, touch somebody inappropriately, harm someone's children. That is not even in my character, okay? Not, and nobody I hang with is that, by the way. I don't know anybody like this. I don't even know anybody who has the tendency to harm a child or, you know, do some craziness. I don't know you personally like that. I don't, you're not in my circumference. You know, you're not, you're not in my um, circle. So, so this is what I'm saying is like hip hop temple, as we, as we learn, this is really all about character. It's all about character. It's all about character. It's all about the building of our community. And this is, this is what is so important. We're not, you know, railing against the 4th of July. We black people, so fuck the 4th of July. As far as I'm concerned. And I stand with Frederick Douglass straight up and down on that one. But again, we're Americans. We live in the American society. Uh, we enjoy America, too. Let me also say that. I enjoy the United States. This place is a great place to enjoy. We can get online like this and say, fuck America, in America. <laughs> that's just dope. Uh, that's what makes America the dopest shit, actually. Uh, as you think, and I'm not saying that in a joke way. That shit is real. Right. Other people listening to us in other countries, you know you can't say that shit about your country. There'll be somebody at your right front now. fucking door <laughs> right now, okay? So let's keep it real. Let's keep it real with that. You know, we get to speak freely here in the United States. The United States also, you talk about independence, the United States produced KRS-One, okay? And I am independent, okay, straight up and down. So... Like I said, you know, we're not ragging on the United States. It's sort of like a family member. You know, you can say it. We say whatever we want about our own family. But if you say something about our family, we might have a problem. <laughs> but at least, but it's the same thing. It's like, no, nah, this is our family. The United States of America is our family. White people, black people, Asian people, everybody over here. We all family. We all, and we really are. We, we really are. For those of you that, that are outside this country, 
and are watching the news about the country, side with public enemy. Don't believe the hype, okay? Don't believe the hype. Don't get your information just from what these news people talking about. You see my face, right? Do I look scared? Do I look nervous? Do I look like I didn't eat today or I've got some problem like America? White folk is chasing me with nooses and shit. No, that's the way they're making it look on TV. And they're really making white people look horrible before the entire world right now. Because what you're seeing of white folk is not even white folk. That ain't even white. white folk fighting against this oppression like you can't believe. American white people are so sick of this fucking country. <laughs> they are so, they're more tired of the country than we are. We, we African Americans are saying, look, we've been going through this. White folk is like, nah, I ain't been going through this. Uh, this is not what's happening right now. And it's, and it's real for them. It's real for them. It's real for all of us, really. But it's real for white folk right now in this country. They're not having such a hot time either. And not because of any other culture, but because of the way the United States government is doing white people in this country. What you think other races that are part of the United States government are not using their power against white people? No, come on now, let's, let's, let's keep it really real. You don't think there's some corrupt black people in, in the government? trying to get over on white families and you don't think white people know that and try to vote your black ass out of office <laughs> like you you don't you don't think that none of the no i'm talking stupid right I, i'm i'm stupid guy here right i don't know what i'm talking about i'm just stupid uh i guess so and you know what whoever's listening to me has the option to take that option to care don't know what the hell he's talking about you do have that option but the other side to this is, if you do think I know what I'm talking about, then, then hear this message, okay? America is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful country. This is, this is not the greatest country on earth. Fuck that thought, okay? This is not the greatest country. Fuck, that's some bullshit. We probably the worst country. But this is the most beautiful country. That's the word I would use for America, beauty. The fact that I can, I can walk up to a police officer and say, fuck you, you racist pig. And if he touches me, he's in trouble. <laughs> okay, This is America, okay? This is America. And the cops are hearing it all day, all day. Okay, you a police officer in America? This is the worst job to have right now in the United States, a police officer. This is the worst job to have right now in the United States is a police officer. Because not only are you really out there trying to save people, because again, America is lawless. This place ain't about no laws. This place is about freedom. Don't get it twisted. This shit is about freedom. It's not about law. We, we having trouble with law and order. And that's why hip hop has to rise to that level. But if you want freedom, come to America. Come to the United States of America. This is a free country. And I attest to that. I attest to that. This is a free country. You get to do whatever the fuck you want in the United States. Ain't nobody stopping you from doing nothing. Even putting your knee on the neck of a black man as a police officer. You can do that too. Right. Right. You can do that too. You can kick in people's doors and shoot them while they sleep. Mm -hmm. You can touch women inappropriately. You can drug them. Get them back at the hotel. Do all types of crazy shit to them. That's America. Okay? The only rule in America is don't get caught. Okay? And even that rule is getting twisty right now. Because even if you get caught, you got that cash? You got cash? Okay, you out. Done. We'll find a way to get you out of this prison. You got money. That's what I like about America. What I like about America is that it's not a racist country. It's a greedy one. And that's what people don't really understand. Don't nobody give a fuck whether you black or white. They, whether, they care whether you rich or poor. <laughs> that's, what, that's what America's about. You black and you poor? We fucking with you, okay? You black and you rich, we worshiping you. 
You can go if you black and you rich in the United States, you can walk up on a stage on national television, slap another black man and sit back down. And the FBI, CIA, NSA, local police, judicial system, nobody's gonna say nothing to right. you about nothing. Right. Unless unless the other guy decides to press charges. And that's questionable. <laughs> right. Well, well, to me, what's, what's fucked up about it is no, you just broke, or you broke a rule. See, I, I separated, I separated from, uh, uh, when I deal with laws, we're right. only rules. with rules. And so rules. you broke a rule. Right. You broke a law, because if you broke a law, and it was law that you can't do this, no matter what this person wanted to do, you uh, you're, you're right, it's going down. You're, right. This will be served. But no, that's not what we have. But he did break the law. That was assault. But it's not. It's not laws. It's assault not laws. Is law. I, I, who knows? See, hold on. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. You'd, you'd have to really check. I got to look at Black's really law check, Right? Assault. Because I, 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 I think. I think that assault is against the law. That if you assault someone. Slap them, punch them, push them. That um, that person can can file charges. Number one and number two. But if I just slap you in your face on national television, I've committed a crime. I I assaulted another person. Whether that person wants to say anything or not, the act is criminal. Right, but that's not how it works. <laughs> and that's not how it works. <laughs> See, this, right, this that's is, not how it works. It's not how it works. This is this is why I would say no, check, or maybe we check. I mean, the difference between ordinances and laws. laws and, and, Look, and I guess I'm speaking to, mar I'm speaking morally. I, I, I am speaking more, I guess, from a moral ethical point of view, because it doesn't work. Right. Assault is another thing. And if you get into the law of it. It might not even have been assault, uh, actually, if you get into the real law of it. Uh, but again, my point, though, is that this is a free country. Yes, and you can do shit like that uh, in the United <laughs> States. I don't want to live nowhere else. If I can do that, if I can walk on stage and slap the shit out of somebody, I want to live in that country. <laughs> that's, the, that's where I want to live, okay? Right there. Right. There are no real laws. There are no fucking police. We don't have no police. People get mad when we say abolish the police. Like I said last week, the police are already abolished. There's no cops here. There's nobody here. It's just white men in uniforms with badges and guns. If they decide to shoot you, they shoot you. If they don't, they don't. You know, it's like it's like there, there was a there was a, a, a years ago there was a, um, a a a case that came out about how the cops stopped some black kids, and the black kids said. We rappers on our way to a show. And the cop said, really? And, and he said, well, rap. And if your rap is dope, I'll give you, I won't give you a ticket. But if your rap is whack, I'm going to give you a ticket. Right. This was all on camera. <laughs> okay, this is, how I, this is how we even know about it. Okay, they spit they rhyme. The cop said it was dope and let him go. That broke the law. They had yeah. to come hemmed up in this. That's how we know about it. It wasn't even about the kids. They was like, this fucking guy over here, okay? Yeah. He is wrong. You were supposed to give him the ticket. You were supposed to give him. And that's what I'm saying about America. It's not just so much the cop is stopping you wrong. Sometimes he's co the cop stops me so to get autographed and, and photographs, okay? You ain't supposed to be doing that. Right. You ain't supposed to be taking pictures with KRS One while you at the concert. You working, motherfucker? Get back to work, okay? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Ah, yo, I gotta get this photo with KR. Yo, they right, breaking well. ordinances, breaking yeah. codes of conduct. It's yeah. normal though in the U.S. It's normal, and that's why I say, even though I'm a staunch critic, y'all know how I feel, <laughs> straight up and down. I ain't hiding nothing, but you got to have intelligence to have a point of view. You gotta see the whole picture to have an accurate point of view. 
And that's why I say America's a dope place to live. This is not no terrible country. Don't let the news tell you that. Come on into America. There's all types of shit going on over here. You ain't going to get shot. You ain't going to get stabbed. You ain't going to get none of that's going to happen to you. That's just them scaring everybody in the rest of the world. It's horrible. It's whack. It's whack, really, because it's fucking up the tourism, messing up the scholars from other countries that may want to come here and study. It's messing up people's investment. You may want to buy into America. You may want to buy something over here. You're like, fuck that. Why? There's no stability there. There's no, you killing people and this, that, and this. And this is what white folk in other countries say. This is what Arabs and Persians and, and Chinese, this is what they say in other countries. I don't want to go there with that shit. Like, I'm not putting my money in some chaos. And that's why it's, it's whack what's going on and why you got to get your information from hip hop. Because at the end of the day, Hip hop is the only real America. The only real America America has is hip hop. That's the the only true America is hip hop, and that's why we run this country the way we do. You they, they ain't talking nothing over no hip hop. Is Jay Z is the president here? Just so y'all know. Just just so y'all know. Okay, Jay Z is the president here. Okay, Beyonce is called the Queen by Queen. All right. <laughs> okay, okay, by real first ladies. <laughs> okay, she's called the first lady. Okay, let's keep it real with you. Okay, in America, I'm America's number one philosopher. Number one. There's nobody louder than KRS for philosophy in the United States. Okay. Nobody. 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 You're, you're looking at America's philosopher right now. I have the most influence over the of urban America in the in, in in the United States. There's no church, no philosophy school, no college, none of that is influencing the hood like I am. No, right. nobody. I'm not bragging. I'm talking about the greatness of America. That's what I'm talking about. That this country is great. Let's celebrate its greatness on the fourth of July. No other country in the world can put forward, <laughs> no other country in the world can be so shamelessly hypocrite, hypocritical, shamelessly hypocritical. Okay, like, shamelessly. At least in your country, there's some shame. That's Somebody right. holding something over your rabbit's foot. Something. You got something. Shamanism. Somebody trying to tell you you was wrong. In America? You do wrong shit. If somehow you got money, you right. If somehow you could convince another audience that you're right, they'll fight for you to be right. Like Trump. Right. Like Trump. Trump has half the country. He don't have a marginalized group, a fringe group. That that's what they call them, fringe group. But that's over there. No, Trump is the heart of the country. And he's hip hop. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Did you hear me? None of these presidents, including Barack Obama, associated with our community. None of them. And I'm talking about before they became president. Right, Barack right. Obama, of course, brought <clears throat> Barack Obama brought um, Jay Z and Talib Kweli and everybody to the White House, no doubt. Uh, and Ronald Reagan. Uh, hosted Easy E at one of the Republican dinners. Right. Uh, Easy E gave money to the Republican Party. Hip hop has always been Republican. Ooh. On another level, hip hop never fucked with these Democrats. I'm just keeping it real with you. Like on another level, it's just real hip hop. Ice Cube, look at his last thing. <clears throat> Side with Trump. Right. Look at Ice Cube, and that's my dog too. I ain't saying nothing against no Ice Cube. He wasn't okay. taking the New Deal. <laughs> he wanted to get the New Deal. And you know what? I might have been there with him because Trump was gassing us all, too. Let's keep that oh, yeah. real, okay? Oh. He was gassing it, okay? But the gas was dope. $500 billion to the African-American community? There's no more excuses. After that, y'all fucking up. There. Like, the African-Americans, y'all fucking up. If y'all fuck up $500 billion, <laughs> no, 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 no. Trump was like, I will do your whole community, okay? First, let's start with 500 billion. 
We gonna control these cops. And this is what and this is what African Americans were looking at is that no, wait a minute. You are the racist, ain't you? Yeah. My father was a Klansman. Trump, his father, Klansman. Okay, yes. straight up and down. Okay. But guess who controls the cops? The Klansmen. So we African Americans got a problem with the cops. Who are we supposed to be voting for? You gonna vote for somebody who don't have no control of these people. Right. Or you gonna vote for somebody who has control of these people. So Trump promised Ice Cube and Kanye West. He promised these dudes. He said, look, I'll clean this whole shit up. But African Americans got to vote Republican from now on. Over right. the next four years. I think he said okay. the next four years, you got to vote Republican. Which will destroy the Democrats. That that's a that's a death blow. Right. That's a death blow. Because if African Americans do not vote in the Democratic and Democrat, they lose every time. Every time you will lose. And they depend on the African American vote. Then when we vote, they don't do shit for us. That's what Ice Cube's argument. That's why he went with Trump. Yeah. People dissed him and ridiculed him, but I read the argument. The argument was Democrats ain't did nothing for us. Nothing. That was Ice Cube's argument. You don't do nothing for us. And that's what everybody's screaming today. The Biden's doing nothing for us. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. And I mean nothing. There's so much that, that the president making it worse. can do. He's making it worse. Word on top of that. Making it worse. There's so much a Kamala Harris can be doing right now, you know, within the African American, really just in America, but I'm speaking for African Americans. I mean, there's so much. There's so much that, that she has the power to do. You ain't got to go to no Congress. You ain't got to go to nobody. You the first one. You, I'm, I'm sorry. You the uh, the vice president. Like, come on. You the vice president. Get get, get change this shit. But now we getting ready to see the truth, though. It ain't even about the presidency no more. It's about having a crew. Right. Right. That's 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 what it's about. It's about having a crew. And, and if you ain't got no crew. Huh? Yeah, I said the crews are the rich versus the poor. Versus the poor. Or 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 what I was thinking of was culture. No, that's the ultimate crew. Rich versus poor. And everybody's in one of these categories. I was thinking more culture, your crew, like Trump, for instance. That's a culture. That right. whole Trump thing and all that, what motivates them is culture. That's their culture. You pulling down Confederate monuments. I know it's a confederacy. I know he the devil. I know the confederacy. Modern day confederate dudes will tell you these niggas is wrong. <laughs> they was wrong. But don't pull down my grandfather though. <sighs> That's the argument. It ain't like they agree. They don't agree with slavery today. They say, no, we can't have that today. But the way you approach in my culture, I got to say something. Right. It's like well, see, awesome. and then the intelligence needs to move in even further is that no, or the union was no better. Right. Oh, than the, the confederacy. Or, right. or this is all, it's all a bunch of criminals. Period. <laughs> That's all it is. That's all it is. That's and, all it is. Dealing with them, or, or, and, and this is where I can see Frederick Douglass's argument. Because he's like, wait a minute. Y'all revolted against the British before, like you was about to do something better. And then you guys turned around and totally did Britain some was, wild shit. Oh, that's crazy. And cheated us out of our inheritance. Right. Cheated us out. Black people started the United States of America with white people and Native Americans. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese. In particular, the history of the railroads and all that. Right. The, the, these are the people that start America. Chinese got definitely cheated out of their share. Okay, forget that. Native Americans genocide cheated them out of their share. Okay. And now black folk. Right. Now black folk. We so goddamn stupid. We just going along with shit. You a slave. I'm a slave. Your parents were slaves. They were slaves too, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> your great grandparents were slaves, and they were slaves, and you all you ever was was a slave. Well, you know, what about those pyramids? You say I come from Africa. What about those pyramids? No, nah, that wasn't you. Right. No, that wasn't you. That was us, actually. <laughs> right. It was actually white folk that built the pyramids. And we're like, right, right, yeah, right. There's a dude saying that on national television or recently, or it's going all over. I know a bunch of people are scrolling the internet, have seen this. Right. Got literally up there and said, no, black people didn't uh, build the pyramids. The black dude is itch, but he said, no, yes, we did. Like, it's definitely yes, we, no. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. We did. No. <laughs> it, it, it is just straight up. Like, like no see, see, me, I'm so crazy. I want to hear his argument. I, I, I want to hear the argument. Like, how do you come to that? Uh, you know, how do, how do you come to that? <clears throat> but here's the point. Is that you know, see, the other side to it is that he could be right. <laughs> New <laughs> evidence coming out. White folk built the pyramids. The early ancestors of white folk are the real pyramids. And we have documented evidence. And with evidence. That would destroy black people completely, okay? <laughs> There'd be no more excuses. No more. They'd be over, okay? That, that would be it. Because what are we claiming? We claiming pyramids. We claiming Africa. And why are we claiming that? Because white folk told us to claim it. They told us to claim Africa. They said we come from Africa, so we say we come from Africa. Yeah. You know, this is this is the other side it's, of the thought. It just showed you that they lied about the Fourth of July. They lied about the Fourth and Christmas. Fuck right, the Fourth of July. <laughs> they lied about Christmas. And you you got to be the devil to lie about the birth of Jesus. Okay, you got to be the devil. Like there's no way around that. They lied about Christmas. All right. Right. Of course, Fourth of July. Hey, that's an easy one. <laughs> that's easy. And Easter. Right. No, it's not about it Christmas, is... Easter, right. all of it. Look, the, the reason we have a June, the reason we have a Juneteenth. The reason we have a June is lies, <laughs> lies, and more like lies. Come in, come in down. Like, no, we're gonna tell you the truth that you're actually free. We're gonna wait for you to find out. Right. Right. Imagine the months or years, a year after you free. These white folk like, no, nope, get over there and bail that head. And they know you free. Right. Right. They know you free. Just and they got, over there like still treating you. Just got whipped two weeks ago. Two weeks. Getting ready to get another one because you just said I heard I was free. <laughs> I heard I was free. You getting whipped in the shed right now. That's how we were treated. That's what went on. Right, And for us to sit around, especially on the 4th of July, and act like that didn't happen, well, you know, that's the fantasy that a lot of us are in, all people are, are in, and, and why knowledge reigns supreme. And and, and why I'll say, you know, to what I, coming up on our fifth hour here, uh, uh, why, why I will say, you know, this is not about bashing America. It's not about bashing the, the 4th of July. On top of that, we're scholars, and we're discussing this seriously and factually. We're expanding our thinking, and we're thinking about our thinking. We're thinking why we think the way that we do, and that's that's what we're actually doing. That's why I want to say proudly that, of course, I'm proud to be an American, KRS-One. I'm proud to be an American. I made my whole life here, my whole career here. It afforded me privileges uh, that I couldn't get in other countries. I've been to other countries. They don't have the privileges that the United States has. I've been to other places. I've spoken to other people. They're not doing too good. You go anywhere in the world, everybody want to come to America because in their country, they can't do shit. You're stifled, you're this, you're that, you're the other. You can't do nothing. You come to America, you get to do something. And you even can send money back to your people when you come to the United States. They don't allow that in other countries. You coming over here, taking our money, you're going to send it back to the United States. You got to go through all types of banks and all types of stuff to even do that in other countries. The U.S. don't give two shits make your money here, take it somewhere else. People hide money, all types of Swiss accounts. It's actually cool to be a criminal in finance here in America. Your, your accountant will advise you on crime. So yeah. that, that, that's the, look, if you want that million to go away. Look, Puffy came out 
He said, don't blame me for trying to bury seven zeros over in Rio de Janeiro. Right. Ain't nobody's hero, but I want to be heard on your hot nine seven every day. That's my word. Like, yeah. He said, don't blame me for trying to bury seven zeros over in Rio de wherever he was. That's common right. knowledge. Right. Right. That's common knowledge. I feel so bad for the IRS sometimes. And I mean that. I feel so bad they got to run around collecting money from Americans. You got to lean, put liens on people. You got to go through all types of shit to get your money. Why? Because Americans don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> Straight up. They're trying to find all kinds of ways to avoid you. Right. To avoid contributing to the to running. To avoid contributing to your own country. Right. <laughs> like, like, look at where we live in. Look at what it is. But that's why I say this ain't no greatest country in the world. But it's a beautiful one. It's a beautiful country. And, and, and on top of that, America is fair, too. You, you would think with all this corruption that America would not be fair. But America is fair. If I punch you in your face, you have the right to punch me in mine. If I steal your money, you have the right to steal mine. This is America. And justice is, and that's how it go down. The police know it. If they know somebody got shot for no reason, and then next week the shooter got shot, they don't investigate the case. That shit's closed. Boom. Done. We understand what happened. <laughs> done. Ain't nobody mother crying. Who we'll investigate my son? They come up with all types of excuses, reasons, visit, leather, boo boo. That's it. Look, you kill two people. The cops catch you. Kill two people. You go get Johnny Cochran. <laughs> Dude says, blickety, 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 blickety. You out. Right. Actually, yeah. got, he got him out with a rhyme. He got him out with a rhyme. He said, if, if, it, if, if it don't, don't quit, quit, you must have quit. If it don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> if it don't fit, you must have quit. Come on, y'all throw your hands up. Even with a rhyme. And that was it. And that was done. Okay, done. They had all the evidence. He did it. <laughs> Johnny Cochran said, nah, if that glove don't fit, none of this is real. And he said nigga on stage, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was over. Okay, it had nothing to do with law. It had to do with you saying nigga and the glove don't fit. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's the end. Of, where's the law? Where's the evidence? Where's the, what's the what? Uh, what? No. And then there was also talk about the jury during the OJ case, what we talking about, the jury, they said that the jury gave it to OJ because of Rodney King. Mm. It's like tick for tat. Communities warring in the law. Uh, this is America. This is this is this is America. Okay? America, you could be a homeless dude with nothing and be America's number one philosopher right now, period. That's it. Nowhere else on the earth. I don't think you can do this. I, I just, I don't think, I don't know. I don't live in other countries, but I don't know that that you can, and it got, there are countries where you could do, there gotta be countries you could do this, but with the speed and like the way America rolls, the the only law here is don't get caught. Right. That's that's the only law is don't get caught because even if you commit crimes, and you get into an area like nobody nobody said nothing about those crimes, and you get into another area of finance, those crimes are done. Nobody nobody investigate like Microsoft. Committed all kinds of copyright, trademark, fucking crimes. Okay, probably killed a few people. I don't know, but yeah. they did. Microsoft, when they were coming up, right. everybody was complaining. He's breaking the law. They're breaking laws. They're stealing, straight okay. stealing. Oh, well, they cre they created the whole back door into your computer. Back door into your computer. They were the ones doing this, <laughs> but because you became Microsoft. And then paid all the people who would have prosecuted you, 
Right. We now get to hear about your crimes, crimes, as television shows. We get to see you do your crime, but it's a TV show. So we're like, yeah, more criminality, more corruption. But I can't front. I would not be where I am if the law worked, for an American law, if American law worked. Right. I would not be here. I, I, I would not, hip hop wouldn't be here. Most of the artists you have wouldn't be here. No, we didn't come up with law. We didn't come up with that. We came up in America right. where the police officer has the right over you no matter what. You don't have to be doing nothing. Cop walk by, he could take your money, punch you in your face, push you, call you anything. You have no recourse. You have no way of dealing with this dude. No way. This is America. And we live with this every day. Black man with his wife and his kids in the car. Cop talking to you all. Boy. But hey, boy. What's going on today? We in 2022. You still yelling, boy? In front of your wife and kids? Step out the car. Your kids looking? Trying to boy you, punk you right there? This is America. This is, this is what it is. But the same America... Same America, when COVID hit, most Americans got 15 G's from Trump. 15 G's hey. from Trump. Okay, then Biden came in, it went down to like six or some shit, and then it went down to three, two, nothing. Now, what the motherfucking storm in the Capitol trying to get Trump back in office? When he was in office, Imagine, do you understand the logistics of every American getting fifteen to twenty thousand? He said every member of your family gets gets three thousand dollars. Kids, grandparents, everybody gonna get this money during COVID. I don't know how many other nations did that. No, there were nations doing it. That's yes. what made that's what made us look crazy. Ah. Because other countries were really getting hit out. They said, no, you can't. We don't want you to go do anything. Sit in your house. We're going to pay you good money. You know what, too? You know what, too? They were already doing that, though. Uh, as I think about it, um, you know, that's socialism. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's where the government pays your health care, your education, food even. Uh, but you work basically for the state. Right. Uh, uh, right, but you no, know, for, we, for the sake of the people, though. For the sake um, of course. For the all y'all go die. You have, but you have to understand that. <laughs> that's a, you have to understand it. That's a, no, America don't understand for the sake of the people. Right. Americans and America is me and me and me. <laughs> Fuck you, you, and you, and that, and this is where we at, and this is why if hip hop could manage to rise above that, right. rise above that, know it's about us, know it's about law, know it's going to be about our codes of conduct. If we could get to that, then we're above, we're above the United States government at at that point, and and that's what we need to to rid ourselves of the social injustices we're facing now. That's why nobody can rid themselves of these social injustices because we really don't have government. Right. You know, America don't really have a government. And that's why hip hop can well, exist. And because they don't they don't know government or, or to me what you said last night um or you were you were telling the crowd at a point you said now why what what's the purpose of your children learning how to spell, learning how to read, learning math. What's what's the point? And you were like, because their your ancestors created it essentially for you, right? To have in the future to use as a tool. This is why you do it now. To me, I would equate that to the same thing as laws and government. Mm. It's a certain people's ancestry that created that and had that focus that created it and thus making 
their ancestors, the ones who are should be rightfully doing it. Mm. And it's this other group. It's really just a group of criminal uh, or uh, ancestry that that just went a different way. Um, really, obviously, I, I would imagine from the same ancestry is if if it's true that we actually all share one common ancestor. Um, but no, there's there's this other group that by force, by brute, by the that's the only way that they know. So then when they took our inventions and essentially are using them against us, thus we have where we're at today. But it's the point of they don't we don't have government because they don't know how to govern. We don't have right. laws because they don't know how to make laws, enforce laws, right. and actually be just in the service. They're not lawful. Right. <laughs> right. How, how, how can you follow? How can you? You're not law. You're a criminal. Right. From the time you arrived on the shores of the Americas, you was a criminal. Right. From, from the time you arrived, your whole actions are criminal. Everything's criminal. Criminal. Right. So now what? You now going to govern a nation? You can't. You're a criminal. Only the real God, the real king, the real president, the only the real person can do this. And that's what the point is. And what's so sad is that criminals are in the government and the real people that suppose the governor in jail. They're in prison, wrongfully convicted, just picked up, whatever it is. That's what that's how America is able to be what it is. The rightful rulers of America are in prison. And the criminals that threw the true kings in prison are the ones that are on their throne, mm -hmm. sitting on their throne. But just because you're sitting on the throne don't make you the king. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. The king is the king anywhere. In right. prison, the king is the king. That's right. On the throne, the king is the king. In a car, in a truck, in another country, the king is still the king. Of, of his or her world. Right. These people weren't king to begin with. They were not kings to begin with. That's why they stole and robbed and killed and did all of this. They weren't the true governors. And here we are now, some 400, 500 years later, still dealing with this same criminality. And the criminality is because we have become so used to it. Like, there's a whole nother thing that talks about how the Africans outsmarted the Europeans, the invaders, how we outsmarted them. And it's talk, you gotta go back to the idea of, if you wanna talk to your ancestors, you can't talk to them the way you talk today. They don't have the language of today. They don't, they didn't speak English. They didn't speak French. They didn't speak Spanish. They don't have computers. They don't, the, the way you're communicating with your ancestors is not how they communicate. So we, we have to disconnect. But if in fact you want to communicate with your ancestors, the first thing you gotta do is think the way they thought. Unite with them in thinking so you could imagine a person in the wild and not wild like everything's wild around them, but they are in nature. They understand nature. They don't right. understand a constitution or some criminal form of government. They understand the governance. And that comes from nature and the stars and the movement of water and all of that is what they understood. So for us to get the messages they wanted us to have, we got to look at nature. We got to look at nature. Now, the ancestors came to me, the Afro came to me and said, yo, here's what I need you to do, Chris. And I'm looking, I'm studying, and I'm studying, and say, if you really want to talk to us, you got to talk to us in the environment that we was in when we was thinking about you. The same way we are thinking about our future, we know that hip-hop's going to be around in 100 years. 50 years from now, hip-hop will be here. 
100 years from now, here I'll be here. And we're thinking about that person 50 years from now, 100 years from now, that might be even watching this this uh, uh, series here, this this uh, taping, uh, this recording. And, and we're thinking about them. And we're doing things now uh, to prepare for them uh, so that they can be strong. And so we care about our future hip hoppers. We're doing what we're supposed to do now, right? But in a hundred years, this whole medium that, that we're dealing with right now may not exist. And yeah. if they don't have it, it, let's say somebody unplugged the internet <laughs> and no more internet, done, okay? hundred years from now, it's something else called the piggernet, the, yeah. the plickernet, and it's something else. Now, you want to get a message from me in your time. <clears throat> the plickernet is not going to do it. I was on the internet. <clears throat> so you got to somehow figure out how to get on the internet in order to hear what your ancestor was really saying. There was no plickernet when right. I was speaking. So the same way now go back to the ancestors. There was no computer. There was no English, Spanish, French. What was their level of communication? How would they have communicated? Well, you could go right to nature. And in nature, Africans were always imitating nature, telling stories through nature. Our whole mythology, religion, everything is based on nature. The snake, the serpent, shedding its skin, eternal life, this kind of thing. The ram, the, the ram, the deer, the ram horns, the horns have this special meaning. Everything, the beetle, yeah. the butterfly, the, the our ancestors spoke through the symbolism that nature was showing them. Right. So in order for us to talk to our ancestors, we got to talk the, the symbolism of nature because that's what they were looking at. Yes, indeed. And the symbol, the uh, symbolization of nature um, reflected what's in our brains. Right. Is what's so fuck or crazy about right. it all. No, it's the same thing. Right. Nature outside is the same as nature inside. Right. So the language that nature is speaking outside, you know it. You you're there. You you can you you're in. You right. are nature. Right. And you know this is what our ancestors was about. I say this to say that there was a plant, uh, uh, not a plant, but several plants that eat bugs. There are plants that eat bugs. Mm -hmm. And the Afro came to me and said, yo, I want you to peep this because this is how we did them. Not all of Africa, just certain people that understood this technique. So they looked at the plant and they said, there's a plant that can't move, totally vulnerable. What it does is it opens itself up and it emits an odor. And the bee, the fly, the whatever it is, comes to the odor and lands on the plant thinking it's going to take from the plant. The, the, the thing lands in the plant thinking, I'm going to get this nectar. That's yeah. why I'm here. I'm going to take this nectar from the plant and have it for myself and fly away. You land in the middle of the plant, the plant goes like this. <laughs> You're in here now. Okay, you're in here being dissolved. Okay, that's it. You thought you was going to civilize me, but instead I civilized you. The African came to me and said, Chris, we didn't lose anything. The people who didn't listen to us lost. That's right. who you see as slaves. Those are the people you see 100 million left Africa. Most of them were the people who did not listen. Period. Here's what happened. The ones who did listen, here was the master plan. We wanted what Europeans had. 
Not Europeans wanted what we had. We wanted what they had. There's a whole thing. There's a whole piece about the envy of of the uh, of the um, the Aboriginal, whoever is original to their land. There's an envy when new people come across. We still deal with it today. It's the reason why African Americans go to Europe and you're you're exotic in Europe, or Europeans come to America. You're exotic in America. You know, the British accent in America is the, is the voice of truth. Uh, it got to be telling the truth. It's a British accent, uh, you know. And so that same concept comes from an early, early, early concept of envying other people. So it comes off with the idea of we Africans envied white people. We wanted what they had going on, Rome, Greece, these people rising up, we was jocking them. And to get what they had, we opened up Africa and said, don't you want this over here? And they said, yes, we do. And they ran into Africa and got hooked up just like that. Because guess what? We never lost Africa. What? Africa's still there. They lost Rome. The Rome that's called Roma today, that is not the Rome of Rome. Okay, that is not Rome. Not at all. Not the Rome we read about. Not Latin Rome. Okay, the dudes that spoke Latin. That is not. You go to Roma today, because it's not even called Rome. It's called Roma. Roma with an A, not an E. You go to Rome to Roma today where the Vatican is. Okay, that place looks like Manhattan, first of all. But the other part to it is that they they're not they they it's not they lost their civilization. Right. They lost their shit. Greek, where's that? Nah, now nah, Greeks is not what they was. Now nah, you go to Africa, okay? Egyptian, the Africa didn't lose nothing, nothing. And let me even keep it keep it even really real with you. Not only did Africa not lose anything, even the buildings that Africa did lose, the, the buildings that were destroyed, they were not destroyed. The Arabs came in and took African bricks and put them and made their buildings. The Taj Mahal right, right. is made from an African, or several African pyramids. They went into Africa, blew up, tore up, but did not actually destroy. They took our shit and placed it in another place. Now, if you're an African priest, and, oh, let me even be more accurate with you and compare it to the African priest. So you're a hip hop priest today. You're part of something called the Temple of Hip Hop. You're trying to educate an entire population on who they are before it's too late. Right. You see the exploitation coming in. Your people are being exploited. They don't see it. They just want to eat, want money. They just wall it out. You're the priest. You say, no, but I know what's going on. How do I devise a plan to save the culture, not the people? The culture. The people come and go. The people obviously don't care. The people, will, you can't trust them. You can't rely on them. You can't, that's the people. But the culture is our responsibility. How do you preserve the culture? You give it to the enemy. Mm, mm, mm. This is high level thinking where you invite the enemy into your culture. He oh. think he's stealing. But in fact, he's preserving your culture for you. Because your people don't have the knowledge or the in, the maturity to preserve it for themselves. Right. Which so you is. give your culture to the world because they are going to preserve it. It's the only way we know about Kush today. The Kushites did not preserve Kush. Right. No the only way we know of Kush today is because of white folk. They preserved the culture. Africans ain't telling us shit, okay, to this day, okay? Big up to Shank and to Jop, though. That was an African that told us something. 
uh, uh, Shanka and to Jop, no doubt. Um, and Dr. Ben, yeah, Yo uh, these yeah. are some Africans that came over and tried to tell us something. Uh, uh, absolutely, shout out to them and all Africans from Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria and Mali and these places, scholars that come from Morocco and these places and places and they come to America and try to educate African Americans. They're there, they're, they're, they're around, they're not getting no light, you know what I'm saying? They can't same old, same old. African Americans dissing, you trying to teach them their culture, you from Africa, trying to teach them African culture. They like, mm, get your boat kind of ass out of here. Yeah, I'm, 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 just braid my hair. <laughs> That's what I need from you, okay? Yeah. That, no, no, no. This is how we act. This is how African Americans are acting toward Africans. This is how Africans acting toward African Americans. African Amer Africans come to Af come to come to America act like they great. Mm -hmm. This this common attitude that Africans coming from Africa to America looking down on African Americans that too is here. That too is here. it's silly. It's right. silly. And only the best Africans come to America and meet with the best Americans or the best African Americans. And that's why I'm saying I know I've met these Africans myself who are here trying to do something. And, and I offer my assistance when I can. And same thing with me. They say, yo, if you ever in Africa, Chris, you know I got you straight up. But that's just me and them. Where's, where's this nation to nation? Culture to culture. One culture says, I got you. And another culture says, I got you. That's right. NATO. That's NATO. That's that's what it is. If you mess with this country, you're going to mess with all these countries. And right. if you're part of this alliance, then everybody in this alliance, you're not going to war with. We're making a, a pact that we're not going to war with everybody in this alliance. We did that. We're hip-hop. Shout out to Zulu Nation. This was their great work. This is the great work of Zulu Nation that breaking, and seeing graffiti art DJing, excuse me, and beatboxing was separate communities mm -hmm. and even almost competing with each other. And it was Zulu Nation that said, we don't have to fight and kill each other, gang warfare. We could break and have a competition in breaking. We could have graffiti competitions. We got MCing. We got DJ competitions. We can let that aggression come out in art, and we all win. That was Zulu Nation that first put that forward and said, no, we don't have to fight fist fight. We could compete in art. And on top of that, brought together Breaking MC and Graffiti Art DJing, which were separate communities, brought them right. together as one community. And this is where we got to now do, like I said, hip hop needs to think about making its treaties with other nations. We need a census first. We got to do our census work first. Throw the census back up. We got to do our census work and, first. And to show, um, or for people who may not understand, um, we have to prove to them that we exist. Right. <laughs> right. right. So who do we exist? Have, who's in the actual culture? Who's in right. our community? Right. And again, right. worldwide. So no, once we prove that, then you can now approach uh, other cultures and start creating your documents and creating your treaties and um, setting up because again, or, or I, I would imagine most other cultures and nations know they know things are going to change. Oh yeah. Um, and oh, yeah, it seems or to me it's it's only normal that or, or for one everywhere is hip hop anyways now itself but no with the with the correct application and intelligence to what hip hop actually is as a culture it's like right it, or, or, or technically we've already taken over every nation right or it's, it's just them not recognizing it right that, well but, no no we have not recognized what you just said Charity. they've already recognized it if we show up right now with a hip hop declaration of peace in Thailand, every Thai of these people, they're going to be like, yup, thank you for coming here and establishing this. We totally understand. We know it started in the Bronx. 
and I'm going to get my voice like this, you know. But I'm just saying that anywhere Japan, anywhere you go, the Bahamas, they're going to tell you we understand, we know what this is, and we accept it. We want to be accurate with ourselves, our representation of hip-hop over here in Hawaii or Hawaii, Hawaii. Uh, over here. We want to be right in France. We want to be right in Russia. We want to be right in Africa. We want to be right over here. You know, everybody want to be right. So when the right shows up, they go, right! Right. Right. <laughs> and right now for the world, we are the right. We are the right. I say this humbly, of course, and with a great deal of burden uh, in that statement. We are the right. We're the ones that are the truth, the authentic, the authorities. We did the work, we have the knowledge. We did the work, we have the reputation. We did the work, we have the skill. And so with that, what you need to do now is send your email and your name to the hip hop census at gmail.com. And everybody on this call, you have the privilege to be among the first to become our citizenry, to be part of our citizenry. I'm, I'm putting a letter forward and a whole, um, uh, like a, a, a PSA uh, kind of thing, a 59 second commercial or something that's gonna go out to the world that talks about the hip hop census, why you should be part of this and so on. But before we do our worldwide campaign, of course, you know, those that are part of the Temple of Hip Hop, you have first dibs on this. Sign up now and become a member, become a citizen of the hip hop nation for real. We're, we're, we're gonna pile up our names uh, and email addresses, working names and working email addresses so that we can go before other governments uh, or, or whoever uh, and, and then knowledge to know where we are in the world. Uh, so on, this census is very important. It's very important to us. We did this in 1998 and gained a wealth of knowledge uh, uh, based on what, what we got, still have the boxes um uh that we have but now we could do it online it's global on another level um and, and and we can really get this off so make sure the hip-hop census at gmail.com send us your name your address make sure you do that before you leave this call if you haven't already all right um it's coming up on on, on the sixth hour now and we got to get to this show yes, uh, we do. yeah as a matter of fact you know what i'm bugging because it is actually six and we got to get out of here so um, thank you and good evening to everybody who actually stayed to the six, <laughs> to the 530 <laughs> hour. We did go over, uh, but it was a wonderful conversation. I'm glad you stuck around with us, uh, uh, with it. We're gonna build this nation and we're gonna build it correctly. Thanks for being part of this heritage. KRS-One, I'm out. Word, peace and much love everybody. Have a wonderful week. Shout out to Minister Pascal.